bussin' with the boys. Bro. There you go. There it is. Welcome to an episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I'm your host, Will Compton. Next to me, we got a uh, different co-host, Taylor. He's out of the office today. Um, Delaney Walker. Shout out Delaney Walker joining Bustin' with the Boys. We're going to be talking Christmas traditions, tear talk with Christmas movies, shittiest moments. I'm kind of thinking maybe our shittiest Christmas of all time. Mm. Shittiest moment that involves Christmas. Overly direct take. We do have a couple. Surviving Barstool, The Weekend Recap, and more after we talk to you about the Chevy Silverado. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they are the official partners of Bus With The Boys, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. Um, tis the, what is it? Tis the season. Tis the season to be jolly. To be jolly for a reason. Your reason, the Chevy Silverado. The first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make the Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with the full line of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you. Their exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, uh, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and the Silverado HD ZR2 is a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head over to Chevy.com and check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevys uh, that they have to offer. The official trucks of Bussin with the boys. Uh, Delaney, welcome. Welcome to Bussin, man. Again, hey. Once again. Hey, I'm glad to be on the bus, man. I love being on the bus. I got to uh we're we're gonna we gotta dive into cause I was boy, we were checking out the the up and Adam. She was asking you about uh Derrick Henry and his press yeah, conference. Yeah. We might as well just just dive in. Right like, in, let's do it. As ex teammates, former teammates of the King. Yeah. What did you make? What what were you making of that press conference? Cause he came in and you could tell it was like the first time that he was kind of alluding to this was probably the last year with the Titans, which contractually makes sense. It's like he had his, his guaranteed money. He's guaranteed money's up. Yep. And you know how the business works. The business. What were you, what'd you take away from? You know, it's just waking up to it and just hearing what people were saying. Like, did you see what Derek said? Is this it for Derek? It was, it was tough. I had to watch it. You know, in my eyes, it just seemed like a frustrated, drained Derek Henry. He was just like out of it, you know, not being able to accomplish the goals that he probably set out for himself, have been the best running back in the NFL winning how many games, whatever he he had his goal set out to. Not accomplishing that makes you feel like, is this it for me? Is this anything better that I can do or be on a team that's better than this situation? And then also having them talk about shopping him, which we don't know if that's true, but that's the talk that was going around the locker room was that they were trying to shop Derrick Henry. So with that being said, everything that he said in that press conference, I just feel like he was being honest. He don't know what his future, where his, his future lies because this is a business. Will the Titans pay him again or will he get more money if he goes somewhere else? But that also lies, do you go to a sorry team or do you go to a team who's competing for a Super Bowl next year? And no one never knows. No one knows. Every yeah. year is different. So I, I don't know. I, I want to see Derek here with Tennessee, but... They probably have to restructure his deal. He's not going to do that. Right. Because he's one of the running backs who try to set forth uh, on their own players association for running backs so they can get paid a yeah, certain I amount of money. That. So I don't know if that him taking a pay cut will be likely something he does. I just, I just don't see that happening. Yeah, because you, you'd almost think like if you're Derek and you don't take the pay cut, then you kind of already know that the writing's probably on the wall just based on, you know, how the years went. Yes, yes. So then it's like, do you go to, you know, do you go to a a team that you could potentially win a championship with? Because say he goes to the market yeah, and they release him and he still doesn't get what he, you know. Deserves. Yeah, yeah what he right. think he deserves. Yes, right, of right, course. Right, right, Yeah, it's interesting, man. I think. You think there's any chance he retires? No. Okay. I just had to ask. Damn, I had to ask. No, I had to ask. No, Derek is definitely going to, if Derek, if they, the Titans don't do anything to keep Derek here, Derek will go somewhere else. He will play another year. Um, I still feel like he got a lot of gas in the tank. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, man. You know, I want to keep him here. I, I would love to keep him in Tennessee, but I know I'm not the GM. I'm not the owner. Business is business. Yeah. They all stand on business. When they come to it at the end of the day, the team going to stand on business and the player going to stand on business. It's a whole new league. Cats is thinking it's the portal in the NFL. When they just not happy, they just ready to leave. So 
you know, we'll see, man. We'll see. Damn, it's going to be tough because. Yeah. He need, obviously, he needs like a, a spot where you have a viable offensive line. Y yes. Because Titans need a lot of a lot of those picks. Uh, Garrett, Jack, what are your guys' thoughts as fans watching like, you know, this could be the end of, you know, 22 and basically the tenure of, you know, that, that kind of Titans regime that was kind of led by Derek. You want to lead with this one, G? I feel like you as a Bama guy. Yeah, it's it'll be weird for sure because I've watched Derek run the ball for forever, it feels like. Coming from Alabama while I was there, Derek was running the ball and then gets drafted by the Titans, which was hype. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but yeah, him addressing the, you know, kind of addressing it for the first time really was like, damn. And we're not doing, you know, we're not getting it done for him. Like, we're not helping him. So, it'll be tough to see. I... It was scary when there was talks about shopping him earlier in the year. And then you win that game against Atlanta, and you're kind of like, what's, like, are we good? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? So now that the this vibe of the Titans has settled back in, it's like, damn. Yeah. Now there's decisions to be made, which it'll be weird. Yeah. Definitely sad. Derek's been monumental the last, what, eight, nine years, eight years. Um. So as a player, I will miss him dearly. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where the identity of our franchise goes because he's been the face for a while. Um, I don't know who's going to fill that role, and I think it'll probably take maybe a season or two to find the next Derrick Henry, um, whether it's a running back, quarterback. I mean, it could, it could be Will Levis. Who knows? Um, it's got to be Will, right? I don't really think no one is going to have as much hype as Derrick Henry had. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't care who it is. Backfield, right? I'm talking about the team in general. I mean, them the them king, doing man. the king, putting the crown on his helmet on before games, just like that. We'll never get that back when, when you lose Derrick Henry. I'm just telling you, just straight and up. I, like, I don't let's know just how be many honest. Players are gonna like recreate moments like the Jacksonville run and yeah. like things like that. Yeah. They're like like cornerstones now of our franchise yeah 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 it's just, and i do hope that the titans if, if it, they part ways i hope they get him on a team where he can maybe have one last run at a, at a deep playoff or or just a successful season because you hate to see such a influential player have like a lull year and it's not necessarily his fault so i hope i hope that the best happens for him in the last however many seasons he has left but Fuck, man. It's going to be so uh, sad. We're, I, we got to have a funeral for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's dressed in black. Yeah. All black. Come to the shop. Lay a jersey down in the middle. Uh, I feel like it, when we get a decade removed, like, when you look, when you think about the Titans, like, it'll probably be Derrick Henry. Yeah. When you say, like, over all the legends that have kind of George. played. Yeah. You think yeah. about Eddie and Steve. Yeah. Right. You put Derek. Eddie, Steve. And, I mean, I at this point, Derrick, Maybe DJ. the guy, like yeah, the number DJ. one, the number one Titans yes. franchise history, like yeah, that's yeah, the face yeah, he, yeah, definitely the face. But Derek, you because y'all got to remember, Derek came in with a face, went to Alabama, stud in Alabama, falls in the draft, headlines. Derek Henry falls in the draft. This is the biggest thing. Who's gonna get Derek Henry? I'm sitting in the green room there at the draft. I'm like, we about to get Derek. Watch, we gonna get Derek. Second round, forty fifth pick. There you go. Comes in, doesn't play right away. DeMarco Murray. DeMarco, yeah. Is it DeMarco Murray having a year? Derek doesn't even touch the field. You get what I'm saying? Dan, Derek gets his shine. Every time Derek got in the game, he broke for like an 80-yarder. And it was like, okay, we got something in the making right here. You've seen it. So, I, I mean, Derek came with that hype. He And I don't think we're going to ever have that hype again. And for what you say, you hope that the Titans put him on a team that's going to be runners. That's not going to happen. The team never give you to a team only if it's a trade that they We've need. We've been doing it for the last... No, only if it's a trade that they really need. They didn't know the Eagles was going to be as good as they was once they traded AJ off to them like that. They was like, okay, the Eagles is good, but how good can they be? They're going to take AJ. You know, can they handle AJ? Well, they can. Obviously, they're doing pretty well. So, I don't know. I just don't think that he's going to go to the Eagles. I feel like if it's a team that Derrick goes to, the Ravens. That would be a squad to go I, to. I like, mean, they have I the know. They for have it. the whole line for it. But I, I they see. They got the running game. And I see them breaking. I see them giving him maybe a two year contract worth. Hey, Derek. And you know what I mean? What nasty. he would go play for for two years. They have young receivers. Yes, they do. So they, I mean, they don't have to keep Odell. No. You have Zay Flowers. You have, I think Rashard Bateman's probably going into his last year of his rookie deal. 
likely been stepping likely. up with Mike Andrew, uh, Mark Andrews being out. Like, so, I mean. That would suck. For Derek? Top three landing spots in the mic, by the way, for the people listening. Ravens got to be one. I mean, um, what other system? The Bills. I was going to say the Bills. Now, the Bills are now interesting because, like, la- like last yesterday, yeah. Josh Allen only threw the ball 15 times. Oh, like, yeah. Cook ran the ball almost 30 times. Yes. They ran the ball over 40 times, like, yeah. as a team. Like, they're they're establishing the running back the in the run, backfield, yes, quarterback under center, yep. and showing that they can do it. Like, maybe, yeah, Bills could potentially be a home for them. Because they signed Cook to a one year, I think. At the beginning of the year, when you're thinking Bills, it wouldn't be. It'd, it'd be a lot like like if you're thinking about Derek with the Chiefs, like you're in a lot of like uh, gun yeah, run game situations, yeah, which, is, which isn't Derek's forte. It's six yards deep, seven, whatever. You know the offensive stuff, and it's yeah. you know running at somebody. Bills could be a spot. I was thinking about the Bengals. Do they have the? Do they have like? Uh, they got yeah. Uh, last year. Is he? This article is saying from top to bottom, Ravens, Bills, Browns. Browns would be. Browns. Rams. But Chubb stayed. Chubb Chubb get hurt a lot, though. Chubb just broke his, snapped his leg. Like, that's going to be. Whether or not you have Chubb, they had Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Like, Derek might not be a feature back. Like, the market. They got Ford, though. Yeah, yeah, Ford. He been balling, too, yeah. But Derek might look at him like, you know, I know he wants to be the premier back, but maybe based on landing spots and money and everything else like you could go somewhere and be more of a role guy you think he wants to do that though no i don't know i have no clue i don't think he wants to right now but maybe like as you get into all the negotiations and kind of see the bigger picture potentially i mean who knows what's uh even would be a good one because that's a gap scheme team like you got bill callahan who you know similar to like the cowboys bill kind of uh callahan kind of built out that offensive running game to the cowboys brought it to washington like that is a favorable system for somebody like Derek because it isn't like a you know, again, it's not like a gun-heavy scheme. It's duo. It's wide. wide. It's a wide zone. Wide zone duo. I, I I think now that y'all talk, I I see the Cowboys too as being a landing spot. America's favorite team gets Derrick Henry. Do you know how? Yeah, do you he, know? Yeah, he, oh my he's god! An action figure. Yeah. He will be. He will be on everything. I'm I'm telling you right now. He'll be on everything. Cause now you look at it. Derrick got to look at it as. You know how much, how many, how many more miles do I have? Right. So do I go to a team that's gonna give me more endorsements off the field and st- and win games, or do I go to a team where I, you know, like almost similar to the Titans, you don't get a lot of endorsements, but you talked about because you're a great football player, but outside of football, it's not as much yeah. that's out there in these bigger markets. You get what I'm saying? So do he see himself now? Do I go and tap the market and just? I'm out there now. I want to do commercials. I want to be seen. I'm, I got to be heard. Like, cause I don't know how many, how many more, how much more I can run this ball the way I run the ball. Mm-hmm. Cause the next step is going to be Derek can be on TV. He can do all that. You know, they, they love having faces like that. Right. Be, be put on ESPN right after they're done. Yeah. So. And too, like, and that's a good point. Dallas is a good point. They might be number one. If you look at uh Pollard, him being the premier feature back isn't the same Pollard as when he was complimenting with Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel, yep. And Derek obviously brings that dynamic to where Pollard can still play to his strengths. And even as the Dallas offense yeah. kind of like looks to next year and everything else, yeah. like maybe Dallas could be like the number one spot based on he loves Texas, he loves Dallas. That's where he trains in the offseason. Yep. The marketability yeah. there is high. Yeah. <laughs> the king going to Dallas. Oh my gosh. Like winning off the field with that's A plus in a Dallas. Plus. A plus. So an A plus market, you're 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 in the role to where somebody compliments you to where you got a third down back, you got somebody who comes in, you know, passing downs, whatever it is, yeah. and Pollard. And you got a quarterback that's stable enough to win games. Yeah. And and not. And you got CD. You got CD, CD Lamb. Lamb. I, I don't think Brandon Cook is. He's only on one year deal. Right? One year though. One year deal. Um, but you got Jake Ferguson. You got Jake a tight Ferguson, end. You got a tight end. I mean, <sighs> yeah, it could be Dallas. Dallas could be one. Baltimore two. Yeah. Buffalo Bills three. Because I like the Buffalo Bills thought. Especially with uh, what's his name, Joe Brady, now taking over as an OC. OC, yeah, they've been crushing it, averaging like thirty points a game, getting yeah. under center, running the ball. But those would be my three. Yeah, mine's solid too. three. I like that three. I think that's a good three. What uh, what else before we move on outside the NFL? What else was happening? 
Cowboys are, are back to being the Cowboys. I mean, you. Prime spot. Yeah, you know how it goes. <laughs> Y'all know how it goes. Prime spot to just <laughs> think for a moment. Maybe, maybe they might this. No. I thought they was. I should have known, though. The Bills, after firing their OC, I should have I should have known the Bills is back to being the Bills and, and winning games. I, back against the wall. They could, get, they could be spicy now putting a team together like in December going into the playoffs. But the Dolphins still number one seed, though, correct? Dolphins, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, a Buffalo can still, like, if they win out, they pretty much control their own destiny to get in. Oh, okay. But I think the Bills could, are going to get back into the playoffs, and they're going to be tough. Like, you don't want to play the Bills. I think they're ready to go on the road. They're ready to do whatever it yeah. takes to, like, you know, they don't need to, to be a home the Bills team. Yeah. right now. Because early in the season, it was like, play the Bills. We're going to smack them. He going to play backyard football, throw three picks. We'll win the game. Now it's like, who are these Bills? Who are these dudes? Like, they are a totally different team. Yeah. And then you got uh, Dolphins look good, even though it was against the Jets. But still, that was kind of like uh, that was kind of like a GBOT for the Dolphins yeah. because there, there's like question marks with them sustaining any kind of offense without Tyreek Hill. And Tua, I, he essentially answered the bell. At one point, he was like, was he 15 for 15 or 11 for he – was, he was throwing the ball really well, had touchdowns, had a lot of yards, like, without Tyreek in the first, like, two or three quarters with the Dolphins. So winning, like, 30 to nothing, I thought was a big win for Miami. Well, they only said that because what happened against the Titans. They literally was like, oh, they can't win a game without Tyreek because the Titans literally just shut them down. So that was the whole speculation. Like, they can't win a game without Tyreek. Yes, with, without Tyreek, the game is not exciting. They don't make plays and get their team hyped up. But he showed it with Waddle. When Waddle was healthy and he out there waddling on people, he make plays as well. I feel like they the same player. They both excited. They are, but knowing that Tyreek goes out and your offense basically falls apart, like, against a team, not like, again, not to shit on the Titans, but again, against a team like the Titans, where if you're going to be a one-seed type team, yeah. then you're going to be able to kind of, like, reload or still operate without, without an MVP candidate yeah. like Tyreek. Uh and I think it also played into, like, last week. Did you see Cam Newton talking about the game manager versus game changer? Uh uh You didn't see all that? No, I didn't see There's that. There's a lot going around. Like, this video of his was going viral, talking about which quarterbacks were game managers, which, uh, on which quarterbacks were game changers, uh, kind of alluding to himself as a game changer, which is true. He was. Yeah, I give him that. And uh, he had two. Uh, he had, like, who did he have in the game manager category? Brock Purdy, Tua, Dak. He has some guys. He's like, these are game managers I, with pieces I, around him. I like, like that. but they're not game changers. Like I, that's a, true. Like Aaron he also called who was it, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. I think game managers as well. I don't know about that though. I don't. Yeah, I, get, said, I, was gonna say, I don't know about that. He said Dak, Brock Purdy, Jared Goff, two of game managers, game changers. A Rod, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Lamar. Yeah, that's that's. I can I can uh, concur with that. That sounds about right. I think what sucks is. If, for whatever reason, it feels like game manager is almost like a shot versus... It is a shot. That's a shot at you. Like, you, if you don't have these people around you, you're no good. That's a shot. Right, but if you're, if you're sitting there and you just put a game up, like, over the weekend, like, like Tua, you're, so he's just, if he didn't have Tyreek Hill, he'd be a shitty quarterback? If he didn't have Waddle, too, yeah. Well, yeah, if you're removing all these good players, I feel like all okay, the... All the that's what you got to look at. It. Some teams don't have any of these good players and they still putting games together. You you got to look at it. If you want to put them in them same shoes, it's got to be okay, the same Okay, shoes. okay, so early in the career, take Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey off the Chiefs. Is Patrick hey. Mahomes still a game changer winning Super Bowls? Yes, we're seeing it right no. now. We what are you talking right about? Now. He, he, they do it. They, we're seeing it right now. If, they, hey, if, they, if, the, if the Chiefs even, if the Chiefs go to the championship, AFC, uh, AFC championship game, we're seeing it right now. He only has one player right now. With Pacheco even being out, that's one player that he he has, and that's Travis Kelsey. That's it. No yeah, I, I don't, I don't, no one I don't disagree with you. That's still a game. That's still a Hall of Fame player player that you're playing with. Like, okay. if, if Travis Kelsey would have been removed from the equation all Patrick's entire career, you think you're saying uh, Patrick yeah, has the same success? And I'm not disagreeing. I think Patrick is a game changing quarterback, but the. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, feeling like the game manager's a shot. It's like, yeah, yeah because if we remove these players, it's like, to me, you can do that with anybody. True. Technically. Like, I, I'm not thinking of all the teams that, uh, like, the Patriots had, but at all these different teams that Tom Brady had, you had a top 
defense in the league all the time. Yeah, yeah all you the had time. Rob Gronkowski. Yeah, all the One time. One year you had Randy Moss. Like, you still have guys like Edelman. Like, yeah, Tom probably made Edelman a lot, but Edelman, like, based off his like background and pedigree, Edelman still made Tom what he was. I'll give you that. Tom could have been a manager because Tom, again, he didn't break tackles. He didn't do nothing exciting. He just put you in the right positions, right? And it, you got to look at it. That's got a game-changing element to it. I would it. say that, too. I would say he 50-50 because he can he can read defenses so well. He put, he do a great audible, put us in a great play. But is he the guy that's going to do a Patrick Mahomes? Three dudes trying to tackle. He break a tackle. Another dude tackle him. He throws a, a 50-yard bomb as he falling on the ground. No, he's not going to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think he's talking about Tom. <laughs> but, but I, like, if you want to do impact player, do you want Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes on the last drive? God, that's, Ooh, that's, that's, I, I think you got to go Tom Brady. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like I Tom Brady is. I feel that, like a well, no brainer. Who, who, what receivers do you have? What's the what's the offense look like for us to choose? What quarterback? You can't. You can't I think Tom that's Brady. Not a part of it. It's just, do you want right. Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes? Right. I, think it's, I think Tom Brady, Tom Brady, Brady does Brady. more with less. I give you that. Tom Brady. That. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl with the second wide receiver being a lacrosse player and Chris Hogan. Say that again. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl with their second leading receiver being a, a lacrosse player in Chris Hogan. He also is an NFL player, though. <laughs> no, he, he didn't. He didn't. I, I do agree. It's time out, too, Mitch. Like, that defense, lacrosse. again, I don't know what year. Like, they've won so many times. Like, yeah, Tom Brady's the GOAT. No question. No no thoughts about it. But it's like, okay, that year where it's Chris Hogan, it's, it's their defense could have been in Unstoppable. But I was just going to say, what was their defense like, though, that year? Like, yeah. It's like, I, I don't know. I like I see I definitely understand I feel like what Cam is saying I just think it sucks that these dudes get labeled as like I know. oh you're this you can't really get out of this box if you don't have these players around you because I think it takes away from some of the play the big plays that they have made it's yeah. like you know it's like people talk about Brock Purdy like anybody could be a quarterback back there and they're gonna look like Brock Purdy <laughs> well all of those guys he listed that are game managers have 10 wins and that's they manage in the game that's, wins are wins yeah wins is wins like, football is the ultimate ultimate team game from from coach yes. to player yes. to yes. Uh, to offense defense like it yes. takes so many elements like yes Tua has an insane brainiac as a head coach but it's like I, I don't the success he had at Bama and everything else like the kid is still a fucking winner it's like he that's still like a you're still essentially a game changer in that regard yeah I, I mean I, I understand that I I think it's just whoever looking at it, you know what I mean? It's everyone who it's who how you look at that. It's how you looking in the glass. Like, you know, Tua went to Alabama. They had studs there. You know what I mean? What his first year in Miami, what happened? With who? Tua. First year in Miami. They had no offensive line. And so bad, right? Get new offense. You get offensive line. You build around him. You bring in Tyreek. You get all these guys to build around him. To make him great, that's how you make a quarterback great. You got to build around him. I I don't care if you a, a playmaker or you a you manage the game. If you build your team around your quarterback, he will be successful no matter what. I don't care if he if he is just a a manager. He can he just manage the game. He doesn't do anything exciting but just win games. Who cares? Because why they drafted Waddle and went and got Tyreek. There you go. There you go. And fast running backs. That's it. Because they, they was like, let's build around this guy. We know what he can do well. Let's have the guys who can do that. He can roll out well. He can throw the ball. He's a lefty, that which is not common in the NFL. You know what I mean? A lefty quarterback being able to roll out both sides and still throw the ball accurately. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Miami just did a good job of just getting some, some cast, some guys to help him out and be yeah. successful. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking of so many different ways. I guess you can ask that question. It's like, ultimately, do you want to build your franchise around a game changer or a game manager the only person on the field that touches the ball every play, every play. yeah yeah i don't know i would i'd rather have a because you almost look like like peyton manning is the ultimate game manager right yep yes but he the best to do it too though so so i don't think it's a knock and you maybe in your eyes you see it as a knock but i don't know i just think that's just like two I, different different styles I feel of play. like the way the clip came off Oh, the clip. It started okay. as like it was a knock, okay. but then it opened up such a big discussion on, then he, Cam went on and had a very good uh, rebuttal to why, like everybody, essentially everybody was even attacking him. Yeah, which yeah. Which is yeah. like, a, you know, that's what happens in, in media, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what I mean, happens in the game that we're in now. Yeah, you, but it opened him up to have a very like 
well put together rebuttal about it all that kind of explained the two, which again, I thought his first clip, it almost came off like a, these guys are game managers. They're yeah. not game changers. They're not actually, it felt like he's saying they weren't actually really good players. They were just uh, players in a really good system around him. That's, that's, that's even tough to say. You can't, I would never say a player ain't good enough. If he's the starting quarterback at some point, he's been good. Yeah. At his job, and that's why he got the job, you know what I mean? But who knows? Cam, who knows how he was coming off with it? He got the views yeah, I that he you, wanted. I, oh, no <laughs> no doubt. That thing had numbers. I know when I looked at his rebuttal, that thing had like 20 million that's views. That's what I'm saying. Like, he got, the, he got what he wanted. This game. He's yeah. got this game figured out. <laughs> but uh, should we talk about Duke Cannon and all that yeah, they have? And all they have to offer this Christmas season, this holiday season, a big-ass lump of coal, illegally uh, cut pine soap, Mall Santa's cough syrup soap, Rudolph's much-deserved nightcap soap, and oops, all brandy homemade eggnog soap. Duke Cannon has a collection of holiday products that men actually like. Give the boys something they deserve, like the like any of these big uh, these big ass lumps of soap, like the lump of coal from Duke Cannon. Uh, the holiday gifts are made in the USA by humans, not elves. These gifts aren't going to break the bank, and are they make perfect for stocking stuffers for your father-in-law, your boys, or that cousin you you barely like. Find the holiday soaps and gift sets at Walmart, Target, or DukeCannon.com. Uh, not for clowns, for the boys. Um, did you see this tweet from Richard Mendenhall this morning? No. Oh, what do you say? We, we got to discuss it. I'm pulling it up. Give me one second. It is. Is he talking about the Steelers, or is he just kind of? No, it is juicy. So you, out of retirement. you can go ahead and just read this, Will, and then y'all go ahead and just go into an open format. Whoa, discussion. right off the job. Oh! Oh, shit. Right on. Oh, Here's Rashard Mendenhall. I'm sick of average white guys commenting on football. Y'all not even good at football. Can we please replace the Pro Bowl with an all-black versus all-white bowl so these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football? I'm better. I'm better than your goat. I'll tell you right now, hey, Rashard. He got, hey, he got hacked. He had to get hacked. You think so? Bruh. I don't know. Bruh. He, he just brought us back 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he got hacked. <laughs> he got hacked. <laughs> I know this. He ain't blocking a punt if I'm sitting on him. <laughs> he got hacked, bro. He did He did right there. <laughs> hey, that is so he's been up wild. He's 45 this morning. He had to get hacked. Yeah, bro. If he's, if he's hacked, he's, de he's deleting that. It's, that's deleted already. That's a real tweet. And he already got 3.8 million views. Well, you know that's going to take comments, off. 3,000 comments, 1,000 likes. He got ratioed by his own. <laughs> oh. But yeah, let, let's talk about it. <laughs> wait up, wait up. The first comment. Somebody said, I'm sick of average running backs fumbling. Oh, somebody's <laughs> shooting on no, no. <laughs> like average running backs I mean, fumbling the ball away in the most promoting important game. the Civil War Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, my God. Line it, line them up. <laughs> it's, he got okay. This was a drunk text, drunk tweet. He was mad because he was reading all. No, it's seven forty-five a.m. This, this, this morning. Yeah, this is this morning. It's seven forty in the morning. Because he was. Out the cold tub. Hey, he was listening to me. He was he. You know, when you have a bad game, you can't stay off Twitter. You can't stay off reading stuff, and it, it's getting to him. That and hang it, on, Rashard. Though he's done playing. He's not even playing anymore. He's been retired for I don't know how long. And he what the, and he posted that? You see what JJ Watts said? Yeah. We get cooked at corner, not gonna lie. Nobody on our squad is covering Tyreek. That, that's a fair point. We're gonna have to win through run game, Watts control the that. clock. We're gonna have to get a couple turnovers. But why did he post that if ain't nobody talking about him? Why? <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice clap back, JP. <laughs> that that's exactly why, Rashad. <laughs> Wait, so did he post anything else after that? No, he's letting it ride. Like, he's that's why you know it's, it's a real tweet. Yeah, he's retweeting now. So he's showing, like, you know, I love that JJ had fun with it. Like, that is hilarious. Break it down position I'm, by position. Running back. I can't back. believe he said that. A, a, a Pro Bowl that's all black versus all white. I think it gets interesting. It does. I think we got a shot. Who? Who? <laughs> hey, yeah, y'all gonna look. I think, I think, hey. we're, I think we're, we're hurt. Is the back seven? Yeah, all DBs. Yeah, yeah. No, y'all ain't got too many. Y'all ain't got enough. Yeah, yeah we ain't, ain't got enough what DBs. The old, old buddy from Iowa who got who was a second rounder out of Iowa, I think, to the Panthers. 
So do y'all do 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 we count the Samoans black or white? Oh, they're out. They're out. <laughs> they're that's, out. A, that's a fair that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. They're they're excluded. What? How, man, you can't leave nobody out. Well, he just said all black versus all white. Line. What yeah, do you what do, line in the sand. But what do they consider they so the minority, right? Do they get to say the N-word? Yeah. As long then as they probably, are. Then they probably get to be on the black team. Cool. We got them. That's, I just need to know. You know, we got to make this shit fit. Start, so you starting two at quarterback? Nah. Who we got? I'm going to have to do. Puka Nakua? Oh, Puka. Yeah, we got Puka. I'm going to do Lamar. Lamar will be the starter. And then um, Tua will be the backup. They got Deshaun Watson through your position. Okay. So our running back, who, who who's your running back? Because ours is Christian McCaffrey. Mine's is Derrick Henry. Stand up. Oh. <laughs> Mine's is Derrick Henry. We got that one. <laughs> what you mean? Christian McCaffrey? Okay, your O-line. I think we, we put together a better <laughs> white O-line than y'all do. I no, I got it. It's even. It's, it's got to be even. Who's your center? Who's operating? I'm my center from the Titans. Uh... <laughs> Who, Kevin Malai back in the day? No, no. Oh, that's Aaron Brewer? Yeah, Brewer. Is he, is hey, bring up, bring up, bring up the uh, Pro Bowl teams from last year. We can at least start off that. We can at least start off that. Who was Ronnie Stanley? Who was Ron, no, Ronnie Stanley, he's a tackle. Who's he's a, good. He, I mean, he's a monster. Gotta that be would a good be on black center. <laughs> it was uh it was uh Rodney Hudson. Yeah, he hadn't been playing. He he's out. He hadn't been playing. And then the brothers, the the um Pouncey, they're retired. Pouncey, they're they're retired. out. No, yeah, they're they're out. Yeah, damn. I mean, they have a strong left tackle, though. Yeah, we do, Trent. Eighty-one <laughs> percent of NFL centers are white. Damn, we got you know. We got one black guy out there right now. He's tiny, but at quarterback, who? So you're probably taking? Are you taking Lamar or Mahomes? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I got both of them, huh? Yeah, I'm going to take Mahomes. Where's Mahomes' toss-up? Because yeah, he is. He 50-50. Yeah, Mahomes can flip. He depends out. on what he put on the paper when they be like, what? what oh, we got Burrow. We got Burrow. He hurt. Josh he, Allen, you got a lot of people. You got a lot of people. Y'all got a lot of quarterbacks. Yeah, we got yeah, yeah we got quarterbacks. At uh, receiver, receiver. We, we have to get creative at receiver. We have to get creative at receiver. We got Renfro, first ballot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm A.J. Brown, Smith, and then... Um, you got us at. <laughs> you got us at receiver. Got you at tight, end. <laughs> tight end, you got us at. Yeah, we tight got, end. we got y'all tight end. Got us at tight Travis end. Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, even Jake Ferguson. I think. I mean, y'all got he's having Laporta, a Jake Ferguson. Yeah, Laporta. Like, I got. I mean, we got right. cats. We got Cooper Cup. We got he, Cooper Cup. He ain't doing nothing right now. Y'all can have we Puka. Right? Hey, come on. <laughs> he ain't doing nothing right now. We got Cooper Cup. But y'all, y'all, y'all receiver that y'all edge us out at receiver. Oh, oh yeah, and then Phillip uh, from the Titans. Phillips, yeah, Phillip. Jackson Barrios, Clout. Uh. <laughs> oh, Hunter Renfro. Oh yeah, Hunter, yeah, Hunter Renfro. Renfro. Trent Taylor. Is he what still about playing? Defense? See, look at look, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sit right there at the line. Stay down. Taylor. See, look at the uh, O line. Like we got Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly. Trent Taylor. We got Don, uh, Deion Dawkins, Orlando Wyatt Teller, Brown. Joel Bettini. Is it Joel Bettinio? Betonio? I mean, we we got y'all in the O-line. Yeah, the O-line, definitely. O-line for sure. I mean, D-line gets D-line, D-line gets is, I would say D-line 50-50. I would say D-line is 50-50. We got Max, yeah. TJ Watt. JJ could come out of retirement. He no, could play. He won't come out of retirement. You got this is he come Pro out of retirement this for a game Pro like this. You have to be in in the game. It's Pro Bowl. Max, TJ, Ray Hendrickson. Yeah. Yep. Hunter Phillips. And... Oh, the Bosa brothers. The Bosa. Oh yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. <laughs> Watt, bro. The Watt. Yeah, yeah. And we're also playing some sound defense too. Like you saw last. You saw, <laughs> no, you saw, hang on, hang on, hang on. You saw over the weekend the Bills. Like when you got a like you got a turnover machine of a defense and pass rushers everywhere with the Cowboys. Yeah. You run the ball right at their face. We'll be able to yeah. establish a run game. Oh no, yeah, no. We're gonna have no. to keep the ball out of your offense's hands because we'll, we'll be a liability yeah, yeah, on yeah. the back end. On the back end, yeah, with the receivers, yeah, makes sense. 
Y'all pretty much went in linebacker too, though. Ah, uh, you y'all got some dudes. y'all y'all got some well, backers. middle Fred linebacker, Warner. not outside linebackers. Fred Warner. Uh, yeah, we got Fred, uh, Cleo Mack, Roquan Smith, Roquan. Roquan Smith. Yeah, y'all got Roquan. Patrick Queen, he's a monster. Yeah, Al Shire, Al Shire, Al Shire from uh, yeah. from the Titans. He's a monster. Yeah, our best guys are retired, sitting right yeah. here. We got special teams. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. Enjoy, enjoy going for two every time. <laughs> Everybody will be going for two. It's yeah, like, who y'all got punting and kicking? Oh, we got a kick. Three. We got a punter, Pittsburgh Steelers punter. He's black. Special, special yeah. Um, Yo, what about Young Hoku? Uh, minority. Special teams is about effort and want to. We might have y'all edged out. You might. Because most, yeah, you might. I don't know. Yeah. We that we don't have any kicker though. It's not a black kicker out there right now. So Chad Ocho Cinco coming back. Yeah, Chad Ocho gotta do. Oh no, uh Reed. Reed for the, the, the safety of Yeah, the yeah. safety, yeah. So, <laughs> it'd be a good game. Yeah. <laughs> all white versus all black. Running back, the edge is us. Christian McCaffrey. Derrick Henry. Bro, like, if you're going off this year, Derrick's got, like, 400-something yards total this year. Like, what, we, what are you, you talking put Derek about? In a, if you put Derrick in the 49ers offense, he'd be dominant. This isn't. This is this is, this is is not a 49ers <laughs> offense. Number one, Kyle Shanahan's white. You got to find a different head coach. <laughs> the Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, as it stands, coaching staff, us, running back, us. I mean, that's not fair. They just start hiring black people as coaches. Like, come on, man. Hey, Mendenhall made this up. Not yeah, us. Right, yeah, listen, listen. This ain't busting with the boys. We're going on Mendenhall here. Oh, no, just know everybody. Oh, line, us. Receiver. Us. Y'all, yes. DBs, us. So close. Quarterback, toss up. Toss up. Quarterback, it could go any way. Either way, that's, way that's, that's a very, that's a very balanced. Even in that. Hey, so is running back if we're, if we're doing yeah, that. Yeah, like I, we, that. I think we just have Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so we yeah can, he can't get hurt. <laughs> Fullback? Oh, yeah, y'all got uh, 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 a buddy from the Ravens. No, no, from uh, Juice. Ricard? We got a blocking fullback, and we got Juice if we want to get. Yeah, get more move. Yeah. It ain't too many more. we get Alec. I think we get Alex. See how he cuts his hair. He it's yeah. like white guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, he black. No, nah, and he went to Wisconsin. <laughs> he black. <laughs> that dude, daddy black or something. So a receiver, y'all got it. Tight end, us. I get y'all that tight end. D line, they got Michael us. Sam. Us. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, D line. D line is pretty balanced. I mean, this year, I, I would pass give you, rushers us. The last two years, the white guys has been taking over, but, but prior years, pass rushers has been all black dudes. Pri prior years, how about was this? The black dudes was the best. You had Cleo Mack. You had so we're talking pat. That's pass rushers. Yeah, you just said pass rushers. Yeah, I would say that's balanced, but I think we got we got we got cats. Y'all killing it right I think now. We have more depth. Killing it right now. Like they're playing way better. Dude. Interior D line might be y'all. Yeah, interior D line give you that. Interior D line might be all backers. White dudes. I Eddie. think the white dudes. Are... Eddie. Josie Jewell. Yeah, I think the white dudes got us in backers. Yeah, he's yeah, a dog. Corners are going to eat. Corners, we're, we're, corners, eating, we're eating a lot. Uh, yeah, corners. Back in, y'all have the edge. Yeah. But I know we got, I mean, I we got, got one safety. safety. Harrison. Yeah. Christian Harrison doesn't Smith. have enough reps, though, yeah, Harrison to Smith. outlast y'all's corners. Harrison Smith. Mike, 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 they're both, they're both black. Yeah, they just light skinned it. Y'all got it, but but here's 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 a game. It's here's a, a metric game. that we have to think about. Two weeks, yeah. Special teams effort yeah. and one two. That's yeah, us. that's yeah, that's not. Two weeks to prepare. I'm taking the all white squad. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, he said two weeks. The dudes is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I, I just don't. It'll never happen. It'll never happen. You might just have to come up with a bus and bowl. <laughs> that shit would be whites on the side. Right? <laughs> Yo, like, that's literally true. go right back in time. Whites only, water fountain. <laughs> right, just uh, do I, hey, the water bottles going around. <laughs> no, no, that's, oh, that's white only water bottles. Eat the, eat the 
the Pro Bowl team for this year, we'll have to. Oh, draw the, yeah, the let's line draw the line. Yeah, 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 let's do it. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. It might not be good <laughs> for so us. Funny. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> At the end of the day, our back end is getting cooked. Okay. Yeah. We nah. truly have to get a couple turnovers. It won't be no white no, DBs the at the Pro Bowl. Control the clock, run the ball. It'll be zero at the Pro Bowl. I promise you. Zero white You're dudes. It out at DB. Play. I promise you. Last time it was one. Jason Seahorn, maybe? Jason Seahorn, yep. Jason Seahorn. Um, That's honestly it. Like, yeah, there's really, we're, we're, we're truly hurting on the back I used end. to think he was black, too, back in, because he always wore the long sleeve, because he was, like, one of the, the best corners. He was fooling everybody. A lot he of zone defense. Everybody. We'd have to play a lot of zone defense. <laughs> right? Try to get your hands on them. <laughs> I know they're fucking quick. There's probably some, like, D2 guys that are out there that we could we could bring in. Some scrappy. Yeah, some scrappy cats. Man. Oh, they definitely on a practice squad for sure. There's <laughs> some guys out there. <laughs> now we have practice squad guys covering the best the receivers best. in the entire league. <laughs> yeah. Covering JJ and AJ Brown and yeah. Tyreek. <laughs> yeah, we ain't got nobody covering those cats. No. no. Pressure, Damn. pressure, pressure. That would be, the yeah, y'all got to blitz everybody. Yeah. <laughs> The NFL's 64 current starting quarter cornerbacks are black, as are their backups. <laughs> wow! <laughs> no way! <laughs> no way! <laughs> Troy Apke broke the NFL's 18-year run without a white cornerback. Dude. Shout out Troy, man. That was the one Dion said he can run run. Oh, he can run run. Okay. Hey, That's that is so crazy. Y'all got to forfeit the game. Y'all can't even play. What's y'all going on defense? It's over. There are only two. So there are 15 corners in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Only two are white. Dick LeBeau and Roger. Uh, I don't know how to press. Oh, yeah. I forgot name. about Dick LeBeau. Yeah, LeBeau we in got the 1960s. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and the other guy was in the 70s. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they, in the 60s, were they even, were they allowing guys? They was, but they was not every, not everyone. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, y'all, yeah, yeah y'all's defense might, yeah, the deep, but might eat us up. But the, the, but for Dick LeBeau, he was a beast though when he did play. He was, he used to tear shit up. Well, yeah, right, you're we'll on Dick you're, back. You're back in the '60s. Is he alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dick LeBeau's still alive. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to run through these scenarios. It'd be, it'd be tough. It just, it'll be a crazy guy. I'm shocked he even posted that though. God, that's hilarious. Damn. And thank God you're on the bus today, and not Taylor, because yeah, it, or else this would be we, really we'd weird. We'd be kind of thinking like, yeah, well, maybe we should uh leave this one alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but hey, shout to... out Rashard for giving a fun little. Yeah. Open it up a fun little conversation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do you want to talk about surviving Barstool at all? Yeah. Ooh. Let's talk about that. Yeah. There was one question from Coach Sean Bell. He said, who was the biggest snake? Who do you think was the biggest snake in surviving Barstool? Maybe even rank them. Yeah. Top three. Top three snakes or just top three players? You do both? Probably Jerry. Snake, I mean, the biggest snake. Yeah, I mean Jerry. Yeah, Jerry knew he had to stab people in the back. He know he he knew he had to play like a long game. Like whenever he got Dave out, I remember he said a little uh, uh, side comment to me, like oh, they forgot I was in the street. <laughs> <laughs> so like he like he like Jerry had a better game than it, you know, than it kind of like looked. Yeah, than it looked because it got kind of stolen from him throughout the game because the windy city the windy city mafia, as they're being coined, ultimately wanted one of their guys to win because PFT and Big Cat didn't have as much of a, now watching back, you probably tell that they wanted to be, they should have approached it like they should have wanted to win, but they wanted one of their guys to win. Mm -hmm. Jerry, Rico, and even Che. But as the game unfolded, Che was a zero as far as getting zero votes. Rico kind of hurt himself and he, Rico thought he was below Jerry, which he was, like if you're looking at the pecking order. And so Jerry ultimately was getting carried until kind of like that final final five. So he wasn't getting a whole lot of credit, even though he was playing like a really good game. Because everybody, once they got eliminated, Dave, Dan, and all of them, they were arguing, making it a kind of like amongst them versus like Jerry made a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Like if Jerry was going to recorrect and still be a real player, he should have stabbed PFT in the back after getting Dave to let everybody know, like he's playing to win the game and he was just making the best move he thought was necessary. And uh, you, you say they wanted they boys to win it just because they wanted them to win the 100K, pretty much. Is that what you're saying? Right, yeah. right, right, right. Because Big Cat and PFT, like, you know, they're obviously, they're, they're 
they make it high up paid. Yeah. Like Gaz, I thought it was hilarious in the first episode. He was even saying it during the first day. He's like, hey, we got to eliminate the poor people. Like, if we're actually going to have a shot at winning. Yeah. Which is hilarious. <laughs> Although it's like nobody, everybody's getting compensated well That's that was in that group. Uh, but yeah, they wanted one of their guys to win. Yeah. And then, like the Windy City Mafia, you're able to take credit as a team that they won the game. Yeah. yeah. And so, like New York, they had, it was like uh, KFC and fights. You knew that they were a duo. They're just lacking in numbers. They didn't have the influence and pool. Like, mm -hmm. we want one of our people to win type of thing. Like, it was just them two. Yeah. They wanted to come out on top and just show that, hey, who would have thought we were going to make it here before the, like, before the game started? Because before the game, it was all about, Chicago having numbers and making it far and mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. So the way it unfolded, like, ended up working out ultimately in my favor. But to the New York guys, they were excited. That's why KFC was. was Did y'all have any shine. idea what games were going to be played, though? No, not until we found the papers. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Did you watch any of I it? I watched a little bit, and that's why so, I wanted to make see. Like, when yeah. they stole the papers and figured that out, they knew the duct tape game. We didn't. Yeah, okay. They saw, so they were able overnight look at the best ways to kind of like duct tape somebody to the wall. Not only that, but PFT sabotaged the our board by putting vegetable oil on mm -hmm. it. No, because some when I watched, I'm like, damn, it seemed like they knew what this game was already going to be like. Because some you can see them start off fast, and the other people like kind of figuring it out. I'm like, oh, they kind of yeah. Did they know or? Like what Once was, we, they, the only one that helped out would have been the duct tape one, but we, like we got the papers, we knew that there was a memory game, but again, you're not able to predict like what order, or order any of that yeah. stuff. We knew that there was going to be a hurt feelings game, mm. and so our kind of guys crew tried voting like one answer, so that way we we left it, you know, we, we had as much like equality as possible, so that way we could try to eliminate somebody from like the Chicago side. Yeah, yeah. But they ended up jumping on that, being like, hey, you have to answer this stuff for real, and they're going to mix the order up anyway, so it's not going to matter. Um, the shapes one, we kind of like knew that there was going to be a puzzle shape one, but again, we're blindfolded, so you're not able to actually prepare for yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, the bag toss, like we knew that there could be some element of a bag toss, but we just didn't know what it was. Okay. And then it was like taking the chairs and racing it all the way around, around collide, yeah, and then tossing yeah. it up on the thing, like, you can have the game and know what's going on there, but you still don't still have like an upper play. hand. You yeah, still got to play. Yeah. But so no, it did, that didn't help us a whole lot. Like once we found the papers and 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 that sort of thing. How was the camera crew though? Like when y'all wasn't doing anything, like what was the camera crew like? Or was they in y'all cool. constantly? Yeah, in they're face, constantly like... trying to run and keep the camera on us because there'd be times where I'm trying to have conversations like off the record. Yeah, that's what I'm you saying. You just don't know if you're saying it in front of the camera, like if it'll get to somebody. Because I I would try to pry from producers like. Hey, what's so and so thing and what's this? But they did a good job keeping it all in, yeah. not saying a whole lot. Yeah. But I was always nervous that if I said something in front of them, that maybe it left it up yes. for them to say it to somebody else that they might have wanted to win. Okay. So yeah. I tried doing a lot of my conversations as much as possible outside of the, the facility. cameras and confessional or like after bedtime, like yeah. whenever they would leave. So, oh, so when y'all really went to sleep, they left? They would leave at 11 p.m. every night. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah. so. When I was going into yeah. the final five or six, like I had a really long conversation with Che and learned a lot more about like his interests actually were because Che was allied with so many people. I couldn't really tell. He was a wild card to me because he was kind of stone faced the whole time. Yeah. And then he would just say, do what's best for Will Compton. And that like, I'm thinking to myself like, Che, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show you my interests. Mm -hmm. I want to get you farther. Number one, I know you're not going to win. So I want you to be next to me. Yeah. But also he was such a swing guy that I couldn't really nail Trust down what his interests were. So we stayed up one night and talked a long time to where I knew he was going to vote for Jerry or he would never vote for Jerry. Once Jerry told me that, Hey, Jay's good for it. He's not going to vote for you. Once I had that kind of validation from Jerry, I kind of knew I was like, okay, now I'm back in the driver's seat of being the swing guy. I can kind of eliminate whoever I want to. Yeah. Because what I was nervous about is Che was such a swing guy that he was going to go with the alliance that he had with KFC and fights because he had that trio with him. And that's why I was so scatterbrained like when it was the final five because I'm like, if these guys are actually smart, they'll eliminate me because I have the best resume. But when I knew after that long hour conversation with Che or two hours maybe at nighttime after cameras left, I knew that Jerry was truly allied and emotionally with Jerry. Yeah. Because they had their carpool system and they talked a lot. Like he knew, I knew that he was never going to write Jerry's name down. Mm -hmm. So when Jerry told me, hey, he's good for it on KFC, 
And uh, he kind of gave me the whole mafia talk. He was like, all you got to do is write down the three letters, K, F, C. And I was chuckling, but I was like, okay, this is, this is the assurance that I needed. Yeah. To know that I'm the swing guy. But it's shocking because I feel like you was the only guy from busing. So for them, and all of them kind of like. Yeah. It's in the same circle. So I, I when I found out you won, I thought you would have been that dude. They was like, let's get him out of the way because you on busing. And it was, no one else there was right. from busing. So. They should have. But that was where I was like trying to do my best to like ally myself with just enough. Because I knew that. KFC and fights were never going to talk to the Chicago side, nor the uh, nor vice versa. Yeah. So I could be a guy who you goes over to both, both hallways. And as long as I knew that whenever I made a move, like there wouldn't be a lot of negative repercussions from it, like making an enemy mm. to where like, you know, ultimately when you eliminate somebody, they're going to be on the jury. Yeah, yeah. So you almost need to be in good rapport with them. Like once they get eliminated, because Rico is going to vote Jerry the entire time. That's why Jerry kind of got pissed off at Rico is because there's going to be no matter what, whoever got to the end, I knew having Che, Che couldn't vote for Jerry, so mm -hmm. he couldn't write Jerry's name down. And then PFT, I knew was going to vote for Jerry. Big Cat, I knew I was kind of swaying him to vote for me. Yeah. And then Hank was going to hopefully vote for me, but he ended up voting for Jerry because it was so known that I was probably going to win. Yeah. That they gave him, they just knew that they could essentially save face by voting for Jerry. Okay. But then I flipped Rico because Rico throughout the week was like, we got close and we were having fun. And he was like, yo, you're playing a hell of a game. Like, I'm going to vote for gamesmanship over voting for the loyalty thing because basically whichever Chicago guy get in got in there, all the Chicago guys were going to vote for that dude. Oh, yeah, of course. Before the game started. Yeah, that was the game. Then it went the way it went. So I was like, I need to eliminate as many Jerry votes as possible. Che being next to me was one, mm -hmm. but also Che was never going to get a vote. Yeah. Because everybody hated him hated for, him. All, you know, whatever reasons that they yeah. were making up. So, yeah, it worked out. Well, it worked out for you, though, just like you said, because you really had no, you can play both sides. You the know whole what I mean? Time. The whole time, just because you, you being like the Lone Ranger kind of set you up for yeah. that victory. Did you guys have any, you guys got any topics of conversation? I know you guys all watched it, right? Like, I know Jack did. I thought the only thing, like, I, you, I think you obviously played the best game and, like, therefore should have won. But the one thing that stuck out for me is Dave's message to Jerry, I thought went a little bit too far. But that's also kind of Dave. A couple of those messages, Dave. Dave though, yeah, yeah, but like some of the, yeah. the shit that he was saying to Jerry was like, like, come on, dude. Like he's been through the ringer, like, and he's made something of himself. Like, and you're bringing that all back up, saying everything was staged. Like, I thought, I thought that got a little out of pocket, but overall, I, was, I really, really enjoyed. You didn't it. think he was trying to get in his head though, like when he was saying all of that. I mean, sort of, I guess, a little bit, but kind of like, just kind of. He just wanted to prove that, like, no, I'm a better person because I shook shook my shook your hand and stuck to my word, and you didn't. So I'm gonna prove to everybody that I'm a better person than you. Trying just kind of put ball. Jerry like a pedestal below, yeah, or something like that. I, I thought the, the Dave's was hilarious. Just asking like, is your mom a paid actor? Like that was. <laughs> but I thought that Kirk, his shit was out of hand. He yeah, called Kirk, Kirk, Stephen Shea's moment four year old daughter a cunt. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Well, oh, yeah. When he, was yeah, out when of he did pocket. that. Yeah. We got to talk about those things. Like, we went on Kirk's show the next day, and then we talked about it on, uh, I think, both Barstool Radio and another one. I can't remember. But, yeah, I mean, ultimately, the best analogy is that Barstool universe is essentially the WWE of media. Like, if you know going into it. I kind of know, yeah. Like, I was telling Charo, my wife, like, as we were going in there, because I knew some of those things were coming. Yeah. She was invested in the game, and she wanted to go and watch the last episode with us, and then watch kind of the reunion. I was like, sweetheart, like, I I want you to go because you're invested in surviving Barstool, and you're looking for entertainment and some chaos, because that is what is about to happen. You're about yeah. to hear some really offhanded stuff, family-related, which will feel different. Yeah. But I would I want you to go knowing that there's going to be chaos versus, like, going there to support me, because if it's just to support me, like, stay home. Stay home, yeah. I want you to go because you want to watch. You yeah. want to see all this stuff through. You want to kind of see the chaos, because it was, like, I knew that moment was going to be a little, little dicey. But it's like, as a WWE character, all these people are trying to perform in the ring. Yeah. So that's kind of how I separate the two. That's how I look at it, too. I did like, hate hearing that. Like, I kind of put my head down next to Che, and I'm thinking, like, yo, are you going to... 
like say anything or step up. Like he, you know, to his credit too, it's like he kind of just stayed like in character. He kind of just stayed. Hey, I, it was fun playing with you. Yeah, it was stayed in character. He, he just stayed in character. I mean, you gotta expect that though with the with the bar stool guys. Like every time every time I go there, yeah, yeah. I just gotta expect when you be like, we're gonna do that. I'm like, oh shit, let me put it. <laughs> And then it's some gay or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So he's like, Lenny, what's the coolest way to jerk off? Uh, what? <laughs> as soon as I walk in, but oh, but all you got is Tim's on, butt naked. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know. So you got to expect that, and I understand sometimes. Yeah, come going in character, you get out, you get too crazy. But again, I think y'all all know that. Like that. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Kirk's thing. Yeah. Uh, J I think Boston. He curse oh, that that makes a lot of sense. He was my favorite kind of going throughout the whole week. Like, we kind of, like, you know, grew to, we were going to be like a little duo. We knew at some point we are going to have to snake each other, but we knew that we could kind of use, like, leverage what we had. Hey, let's bring Che along. I think ultimately if we get to the merger, we can get to Rico, we can get to Tommy. And I know his he's more allied with Rico. Like, that's where I would have fell off and then kind of had to make my own snake move when we got there. But Kirk was kind of like the dude who had, like, the rational understanding of, hey, yes, this is our benefit. Let's ride it as far as we can go. But when you had to eventually like cut ties with fights, was that hard? Yeah. Because it felt like he was at even in the end, kind of like you didn't want to like go one on one. Yeah. Like he was the one that I kind of was like, damn, I don't want to hurt fights' feelings. I know. Like when we tried eliminating fights, when it was ten of us left and we still had our crew, and then Che flipped and didn't go fights. Um that sucked because what they didn't show on that episode when we all, when Kirk and I picked fights and then them three picked Kirk to go out and they stay at Che Turner's back on Kirk. What they didn't show is before that elimination happened, I felt, I felt bad enough to where I told Kirk, I said, Hey, I'm going to tell KFC and let him know. Cause I don't want them to see, cause no matter what, we're going to still need KFC on our side. Like when this happens. And so I pulled uh, KFC into the studio, their studio. And I was like, Hey man, like, I'm just telling you this out of respect and because we have the numbers, but we're getting fights. And we it's three versus two. Like, Che's going to vote with us. We got the numbers. I just wanted to let you know because this sucks, but ultimately we feel like this is what we have to do to go farther is eliminate fights because we're going to have to split you guys up eventually. And he put on a hell of an acting performance in front of me. And he was like, so I can still vote for fights? I was like, yeah, vote. Or he goes, I can still vote for Kirk. And I was like, yeah, vote Kirk because that'll save face with fights. But I just wanted to kind of let you know out of respect that we have the numbers. We're getting fights. I want you to know because we are still we still would like to rock with you, but we understand if you want to cut ties. He put on a hell of an acting performance. They ended up flipping. To where that is why I ultimately doubted Che in the long run. Like when KFC was like, you should have just trusted it. And I was like, bro, I tried telling you I wanted Che without saying, hey, it's Che. But you, since you didn't give me that back, I just didn't know where everybody ultimately stood because we're getting close to this hundred thousand dollars. Like anybody ought to do anything at this point. But so yeah, that part was cut out, which KFC to me played as good of a game methodically, like mentally, as anybody. Like he was doing a good job massaging certain relationships, like stabbing, acting when he had to act. Um, so it sucked cutting him when I had to cut him. But I wanted to get fights even then, but fights won immunity. So you right. couldn't get fights. Like, I ultimately, from when I voted for fights that first time, I wanted them the rest of the game. But if I was going to get back in their favor, I had to vote with them a couple times. So that way it seemed like, hey, I was just doing it because I wanted Kirk, blah, blah, blah. So that way I could get kind of back in their good graces. And then we would watch movies and get baked up every night. <laughs> we like, eat snacks and feed the relationship. And right. ultimately, you know, we had to, I had to make that move. <laughs> <laughs> is there somebody that got out early that you wish was in it longer? Rico. Mm. I wish Rico would have went long. Like, to me, Rico could have played a really good game. He just didn't understand the politics of it. He sat back more, didn't, like, he never got on offense. Because to me, he could have played, Rico could have played the Chicago side in Dave's group all the way up to the merger. And then when you get to the merger, you have not, like, favor, but you got allies with, not necessarily like we're allies, but you got to know the people who you could kind of make an ally. Like you have enough of a relationship with it. It's like you can at least talk to them. Yeah. Like he had he had Kirk on the other side. I'll go ahead and throw myself into it because Kirk and I were allied up. So Kirk would be like, hey, no comp's good right now. But if you're Rico, you got the Chicago team with Big Cat, PFT, Jerry, 
Jay, like, kind of massaging and playing that game. And then you also could have just out of your way went to Dave, like, hey, this is what I'm thinking, blah, blah, blah. Like, tell secrets. Play Dave, Gaz, and Tommy into your favor, along with uh, Chicago. Went into whoever you had to go with and side with to make sure you still had the numbers and work with that group until you got to the merger. You get... Kirk and myself, and then you're literally controlling the board. And Rico could have done a really good job, like setting himself up that entire way, kind of similar to myself, but he had true allies he could have worked with throughout the whole game. So I think Rico truly had the biggest missed op of anybody, in my opinion. It would have been fun to get Hank, but you just knew Hank was going to work with whoever he's going to work with. He over, he, in that second episode, he was had a good narrative with Kirk sabotaging the game, which for a minute I was like, man, could he? But then Hank, they didn't show it. Yeah, he Hank said had a couple of y'all. He showed in his pocket, like just an object in his pocket, like he had a fake idol. And so then when he did that, I, uh, the boys all got together. And it's like, hey, if Kirk actually sabotaged the game, he'd feel so confident that he wouldn't have to feel like he had to play an idol. So him playing an idol just shows that that's a fabricated story. Yeah. So Hank got eliminated. I would have loved to see how far Gaz could have actually got if he wouldn't have fucked up the text to Jerry. I'm Jerry. I, yeah. I'm Jerry. What is this guy on Pluto? <laughs> but, yeah, Rico, Gaz, I thought Dave played a bad game. I thought Dave played the dumbest game of all of them because he had so much upper hand. He could have had so much influence, but he talked too much strategy with Jerry, saying, like, hey, we'll smoke out the idol here. We'll do this, that, the other, without thinking. He's going to at least talk. He has a relationship with the Chicago guys. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my, I guess, report card. Tommy played unbelievable. I mean, he was obviously the target, the mark from day one. And he had to find the idol, and he did. And he was that like... was crazy. He was like water with everybody the whole time. He's just survived, survived. Yeah. Get with this crew. Yeah. Know how to... Be like, hey, it's not beneficial to get me out. Yeah, you can use me type thing. Like, it's beneficial to get him. I thought he was a master at that stuff. But Kingslayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kingslayer. Another Kingslayer. Direct TV. Our overly direct take is presented by Direct TV. Direct TV is the ultimate destination for pro, for pro football. It's where fans can get their football fixed this season. Whether you're watching games live on TV or a streaming app, Direct TV has you covered and you can get Direct TV without satellites. Stop compromising. Start watching ball. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Overly direct take. Do you have an overly direct take? Like an out-of-pocket take? Mm. No, you go first. I'll pop, I can find one. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> this is great. Wait, y'all got one back there or what? My overly direct take is going to be Tomlin messes around and gets fired. Ooh. Wow. That is. That could be a bad. That could be a very bad take. I just. That's feel, a bad take. I just. I, I just feel like how the Steelers are rolling. How the family. I like Tom. I think he's a. I think he's a. You know, as far as culture, head coach, everything you we've known on the outside, I think Tomlin's like a really good head coach. Yeah. But I feel like the way that the Steelers have trended over the years recently, you know, it can happen. Like, I mean, look at Bill Belichick. I mean, would you? It can happen. Bill Belichick got to step down after the next, after this year, so yeah, something that could happen that's more close to y'all is Arthur Smith. Would he be on? Fuck, ooh, man. Ooh, 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 ooh. After losing to the Panthers in a bad way, well, they they a bad team away. They a bad they a bad way team. So we know the Panthers that Panthers are two and bro, know. you can't lose I to the know. Panthers, I man. Know. And I think it's like the lack of offense with the cats that you have. They got pieces. Yeah, it's definitely gonna raise the question, but you know, you know where my alliance is, man. Yeah, I, uh, my head man that was giving me year ten. Yeah, Arthur would do anything for you. I hate to see something like that happen to him. I think he's in a good spot contractually, like relationships. That oh yeah, will relationship be good for at least wise, another yeah. year. Yeah, I but give he him does one have year. to put it together. He better. He have to. Um, go ahead. You got one. A lot of offense. A lot of fun. Who do you think will be the new head coach of the Chargers? I still think Bill Belichick. I, I still like to buy into that rumor of... <laughs> I still like to buy into the rumor of, like, California, retirement, and in your career there, uh, chasing the record of who Lombardi, right? 
Shula. Uh, chasing the record of Shula, doing it with an offense that the Chargers have. You already got a, a quarterback in Herbert that you don't have to develop like you, you've had been trying to do with Mac Jones. Um, and then you got to just build culture and defense, which that is Belichick. So I like to buy the stock into the L.A. Chargers for Belichick. And I, I'm going to do my overly di- uh, direct take. Jim Harbaugh goes to New England. Oh, New England. That's I like that one. Yeah. I do think he goes to the NFL. I think he goes to the NFL. You need to get him out of the big I say New England. As soon as I saw that that fire, I said, oh, that's a, that Jim would take that job. Yeah. He'll take that job. I can see that happening. Yeah? Yeah. I can see that happening. Yeah. Let's get Jim Harbaugh to the Patriots. I know a lot of people want him on the Bears, but the Bears they, are trending. They trending they up right now. They got to keep right yeah, now, right? They kind of going up. They kind of going up. They just got to keep adding players, add players to that team, and they, I feel like they're going to be successful at oh, one God, point. Crazy. Crazy. I know. Hey, he caught it, though, and then kicked it. To... I'm like, bruh. How? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. But yeah. what about Joe Flacco, though? Sheesh. I love, I love it with Flacco, dude. Just out there trying to sling it. It just feels like the replacements with Falcon. Yeah, I know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the way he looks. Yeah, yeah. He's like the ultimate underthrow your receiver, get a DPI, and move, yeah. march the ball down the field. Hey, yeah, bro. Yeah. Flacco's back. Get it man. done, baby. Get it done. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking of when we're talking about it. Game manager. Right. Game yeah. changer in Chicago, you think Fields would be more of in the game changer category. Yeah. Really, what it kind of is, is like, if a guy can move, he's a game changer. That's literally <laughs> what it is. Game manager. Yeah, that's literally what I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the game manager are guys who have, like, those intangible things that always get talked about that you can't necessarily measure, and all the tangible shit, like, can you move, can you run, can you jump, can you... Dive on the side <laughs> and throw a no look. And you basically run the wildcat. Like. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Um, I had something. You guys see that uh, Nebraska is probably landing the number one recruit in the country, right? That's Dylan Railway. That's, that's big. That's massive. Let's call that what it is. Ooh, Dylan Rayola. Never heard of him. Are we, are, are no we, way. It's all right. You're, 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 you're at, what, at what point do we go through Nebraska's schedule and you, you <laughs> prediction? That'll be that'll be next year. No, that was just we were looking at where to do our shows next year, like a live event or like a live event or a live podcast. And since we were looking at the schedule of Nebraska, that's why I was just kind of scanning it and I was like six and oh. I'm telling you, the last the back half looks dicey to where boom, we feel like we're riding high and then we just get sniped out from under us. And we just go to a, just a lower bowl game versus like a massive one, but <laughs> <laughs> we got a shot. Especially if we get Dylan Rayola, and if he is who he's measured to be, yeah, we got we still got we got work to do. But if you land a five star, you land the number one quarterback in the country. Absolutely. Talent is going to follow him. Look, everyone, old linemen are going to want to protect for him. Receivers are going to want to catch from him. Because the spotlight's going to be on him. But that's crazy. Why is he going to Nebraska then? Because he's okay. Wanna... So, his old man went to Nebraska. Okay. Dom. Glad you right. asked. Dominic Raiola? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. He spent double-digit years in the league. We're talking about a Pro Bowl cat, Dominic Raiola. Okay. His, his uncle also coaches the O-line at Nebraska. Oh, okay, okay. So, there's family ties oh, at yeah, Nebraska. Yeah. The alumni, family ties. However, he's been committed to Ohio State, decommitted. He then re- he committed when he was down to Georgia, Nebraska. He committed to Georgia. Right. Currently, he is a Georgia Bulldog. I'd like he lived there right now, right? He moved, he bought a house, yeah, yeah and yeah. like lived there. Yeah, yeah. But now it looks like we're switching. The eleventh hour, we might be landing him to the Big Red. Uh-huh. I texted Rule over the weekend, and I was like, "Hey, let me know if I can get on a Facetime with this kid, and I'll seal this deal right here, right now." He didn't let me. You think do you think he stays the whole time? Since this portal, if y'all get them. Yes. Here's, here's why. I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. Luke Skywalker. I am your father. Yeah, you look at <laughs> no, you, you look at the rise of the Jedi. Yeah. And then the fall of them when Anakin was ultimately supposed to be the chosen one. And then he goes to the dark side and they crumble. Jedi have to go back into hiding until 
years later, again, decade later of success in Nebraska. We've had a drought. We've been at our lowest of lows. Yeah. You come back years later, Luke Skywalker brings balance back to the force and essentially saves the galaxy. Example number two, the Lion King, Simba. You got a prosperous pride rock while Mufasa's at the helm. Mm -hmm. Scar or Sean Ikers and Harvey Perlman yeah. come in and eliminate what was being built. built. Mufasa, Tom yeah. Osborne, Bo Pelini, mm -hmm. Willie C, Rex Burkhead, Levante David, the names go on and on. <laughs> now, now it gets taken over. Mike Riley comes in. Ikers comes in. Mike Riley, Scott Frost. We thought he was going to be the chosen one. Mm -hmm. Turned out Scott Frost was Anakin Skywalker yeah. in, the, in, that, in that example. Yeah, yeah, Didn't have yeah. the higher ground. Didn't have yeah, the higher yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. So Simba, as a young cat, has to fall back until Dylan Rayola, Simba, understands people talking to him. Hey, yes, you're having a great time over here. Akuna Matata, you'll have the Akuna Matata in Georgia. Yeah. You'll, but you'll still be just another guy. Come back to Pride Rock and bring it back to life. Now here's, my final pitch would have been, my final landing spot would have been this. Dylan, I've been an alumni long enough now. You're going to be an alumni way longer than you are a player. If you are who you think you are, who we all think you are, recruiting bases, everything else, you're going to have a lot of success and make a shitload of money no matter where you go. But knowing that you are an alumni longer than you are a player, imagine the legacy you will have at a place at Nebraska when you bring that balance back to college football. You're going to be a legend. There's going to be a statue at some point. And that is all I would have wanted to say. <laughs> and say, hey, you know, you make your decision, but I'm just letting you know, being on the other side of it, you, you have a chance to do something that would go down and be cemented in stone. We'll make sure he gets this clip. Yes. Yeah, we need K yeah. will be going towards that statue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, how much did they pay him? Because God damn, he didn't flip twice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, Coach Rules got some game. I mean, he was I'm about sure. to get uh, the Ohio State cats. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure his dad has something to do with it too. I'm like, here. I heard we don't want McCord, but McCord was a five star. He was a Ohio, the Ohio State cat that just won what twelve games. Do you and, know that uh, the Dylan Rollo's uncle is the O line coach? Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I might have missed you just saying that. <laughs> so yeah, so there's, there's, some, uh, there's some story out there that this past week, like when they made their last pitch to Dylan, and it looks like he's thinking about flipping to Nebraska, that Donovan Raola, his uncle, not only did they visit him out there, but Donovan stayed at his house the entire week so other coaches couldn't come in. Is what, I, is what wow. I was reading. That was me reading something on Twitter. That wasn't from, like, a coach or anything else. But, but it was just a verbal, right? He's I mean, verbal to Georgia. He's verbal to Georgia right now. And then he he verbal to... He was, hasn't verbal to Nebraska. Signing oh, day. Oh. Sign, hey, but here's he's the thing, though. Uh, Signing day is Wednesday. Yeah. Is this, it's tomorrow. Because this, this that's yeah, what yeah. everybody's listening to is Tuesday. Signing day is tomorrow. So he's going to be... Signing in, somewhere, yeah. Somewhere tomorrow. So he's going to do the... The fool you chat. And he coming he to Nebraska. Probably, he, oh, I, he go, I try. I, I reached hey. out because I got his dad. I got his dad's number two. I say, hey, Don, you know, I don't know what your son's doing. We would love for him to come on bustle with the boys. I won't. All I wanted to do is make that pitch I just made. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted yeah, to make yeah. the pitch I just made. Maybe ask him about a couple of recruiting things, but you don't got to commit on the bus, even though we would have you. You, you would ask him for he sure. Did, he, did, he, he, did, he didn't respond, but <laughs> you just know that I'm trying to do my work on the back end. Yeah. We'll see come Wednesday. We'll see. I thought about taking some of my surviving Barstool money and putting it toward the NIL. But, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, $100,000. <laughs> twisted question. Let's get into the twisted question. Let's change it up a little bit. Twisted question brought to you by Twisted Tea, the smoothest hard iced tea out there. It's holiday season, football games, game days, all of them in between. Keep it twisted with uh, Twisted Tea. Grab a refreshing Twisted Tea today anywhere. Gas stations. Uh, all of the places that have Gas refrigerators. Oh. Yeah, yeah. All the places that have refrigerators. You should be filled up to the brim with Twisted Tea. Mitch, what do you got for us? The, the confidence is at an all-time low with these questions. Uh, so with... Um, Under promise, over deliver. Here you go. Yep. With This is a good question, given that you just won Surviving Barstool. Would you rather give up all of this year's money or all of the memories that you made this year? Mm. Rather give up all this year's money. 
<laughs> all this year's money for myself? Are we talking about the 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 business of busting with the boys? What do you? What you? I we, I guess I need some specific. Yeah, like that's all a, of the money that you have made that has been that into you your made, bank account. Just you made your in your bank account. All of that this year. Would you rather give up all of that or all of the memories that we have made, all the trips that we've gone on, all the stuff your Italy trip with Rue and your family? Oh yeah. shit! So just all my personal stuff too. All just the memories you made. I give up. I give up year, money. Right? Just a one. This is just a year. Just, yeah, just a year. I give up the money. Um, the memories. Fuck that. I mean, I get that. You give memory. up the memories. I get them back next year. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I. That's how I feel about the money part. Like. Well, yeah, I mean, it depends if, if in the line of work, you know, what you're doing, then you're going to always get the right, money. Right, if you're, back. like, on the last year of your football deal or yeah. something, and then you're getting, like, your last you know, guy, I'm, yeah, I'm, a lot of money, and you kind of, your future's up in the air. Yeah, yeah. The kid element is tough. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. give up the money. I'd give up the money. What are your, some of your favorite memories from this year? Well, you just said one. Italy is massive. But all the shit that we've gotten to do, like, bussing-wise, um, so on the personal side, Everything involving the family, like Rue's first birthday, Italy, taking them home to 4th of July, shut up on to Missouri. Uh, all of those things, obviously, are invaluable. But all the shit that we've gotten to do as a squad from, I mean, the Super Bowl was part of this year. The run we've been on since the Super Bowl, like it's, we've gotten to do so much shit. All the live events we got to do in the springtime, like traveling to different cities, kind of doing our first our first actual like live pod tour and kind of figuring out if it's something we want to do, kind of learning on the go with that. I thought that was a lot of fun. We got to go to Vegas, like that relationship with Dana and like getting to go to the U S we got to go to international fight week. Yeah. Which was, and we sat in the second row. I'm sure. I mean, being at a pay-per-view UFC fight was always on like on my bucket list, like mm -hmm. Conor McGregor, at UFC, like, have a good seat, but not thinking it was ever going to be through a, a plug. Yeah. But getting to sit in the second row at, uh, at International Fight Week and seeing all the faces that we got to see, like, Johnny Knoxville, Trump, Mark Wahlberg, like, all these people around, David Spade. Yeah. Mel Gibson has Joe Bula. Dirt, Mel Gibson. Mm -hmm. Like, that was just nuts. And then uh, the football season. We, Goggins. we did a couple training. Yeah, Goggins. I mean, we got to see Goggins, bro. <laughs> see Shane perform before his special came out in Vegas and build build on the build on those friendships that we've made. Like with Caleb, like he talked about the late, the late friends, like going to Notre Dame, going to all the places we got to go through on the fall tour. Like we got to be on the stage with Shaq. <laughs> did he did he hunt one of y'all? Uh, he grabbed Taylor and just let him know he could take him <laughs> behind. Yeah. <laughs> he grabbed Taylor. But we got to do so much cool shit, man. Yeah, yeah, it's I, it would be hard to delete those memories. Like, yeah, I think we'll continue to make, I feel like every year, busting wise, personal, all of it feels like, hey, this is our year. It's going to be a better year this year. And it does, like, it does become like a better year. We get to have like a lot of cool moments with each other. It's going to be tough to top, though. Yeah, but it felt like the year before was going to be tough to top. And ultimately, I think too, like, as long, like for me, it's more of. It's not like I, we have the expectation of it being like insanely outlandish, or all these opportunities are going to come our way. They kind of just happen, and it's more fun. I feel like that way. I feel like it'll even grow from here. Yeah, it's just um, nowhere but up. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. To be honest with you. So yeah, it's yeah, giving up the money for sure. Now that's even more the, talking that through. I feel like it's even more definitive. Because the stuff that we're doing, like, that stuff will continue to happen. What's your choice, Mitch? <laughs> um, I would probably give up the money. There's some memories this year that I would like to forget. Um, but <laughs> uh, I, think, I think those, like, I mean, being as young as we are, like, those make you who you are. So the, like, yeah, you, you, you take the good with the bad, but. I mean, being able to, like you said, all the trips and stuff that we've been on, like spring tour, uh, going to Vegas, going to Arizona for the Super Bowl. I mean, we spent a day with Jeffree Star, just wild. And just all the people we've gotten to meet. Uh, oh, that I, I would, yeah, time. that was, uh, I'd give up the money. <laughs> no, we get that. Hey, give it all the money. Hey, no, we get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, man, like, you've had a hell of a year. I know that there's stuff that you'd like to delete, but bro, that's like, that's, <laughs> that's fucking. I'm giving up the money. Okay, yeah, yeah but that. I'm just yeah, yeah. even add on to it. Like that's part of the game, bro. 
He said that. You learn about yourself in your lowest times. I know your times have been low, but you've had a fucking hell of a year. And you're going to look back at this year one day and be able to pull from it when somebody else is down and out. Because you're still fucking standing. You're not only standing, but you're thriving and you're prospering, bro. Yeah, you eating, man. ASAP, bro. Always striving, prospering. He not eating. Come on. Oh. Uh. <laughs> might be. I'm getting hungry. Dude, enjoy. Have to order some food, man. It definitely. So for context, I decided to do the 72-hour water fast. <laughs> fucking idiot. But this past weekend, I was caroling up in Jersey. Just got super banged up and was hung over all day yesterday, being Sunday. Flew home. And I was like, yeah, like, I'll just have my last meal like this half of a cold pub sub. I ate it, and I was like, yeah, this is all right. And then I woke up. Yeah. Uh, So. (laughs) And so I woke up. I woke up this morning hungry, and I'm like, I said I was going to do this, do like this water fast. But I'm like, I might be like way too malnourished right now to go through for three days. So. It might get pushed off. Three days of go. only drinking water? Oh, I can't do it. What are you guys it. doing, man? I can do it. I want to. I'll pass really out. Bad. I just don't know if right now is the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, how about you? Oh, man. Tough. Because I love, I love that paper, dog. You know? I love that <laughs> oh, paper. Shit. Hey, how much did you make in Vegas? <laughs> so that's the thing. If you'd asked me before this weekend, I'm taking the memories. But I did very, very well in Vegas. How'd you do? I went up 23K. Yeah. Oh my God. You ain't giving that back, are you? So that, so yeah, Second like comma. Delaney said, man, like I can make more memories. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I do feel like this year has been a uh, a Hall of Fame year for us. And hopefully we only go up. So it's tough to delete those memories. Um, I think I will keep the memories though. We'll, we'll make more money, but it That's would be very up. tough to give up well, we just won. <laughs> but we've had some fun times this year. So, you know yeah. Jack now is in a spot to where he's like, I'll make that back. Yeah. Even though I'm going to give out the money because I, th- I figured out the game. <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, yeah. what they're good at. I, I don't want to forget. About you, JP? Give up the money all day. No question for me. Talk he about it. Talk for Oh, yeah, he just got proposed. Yeah, that man yeah, just yeah, got yeah, engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Regardless, I... Memories over money all day, every day. You can't get memories without money, though, man. He wouldn't have never got his hot wife if he wasn't in <laughs> NFL. You would have never got your hot wife if you didn't play, wasn't on busting with the boys. He would have never had a hot chick if he wasn't on, like this money, yo. It's like me. I know I'm not the best look, but I got money. So that helps. It helps. <laughs> Yeah, hey, you're not lying, not but lying. you're still gonna have all these things like with the with the memory part that made you who you are. Like the touchdowns are still there. They, will, I will lose them though one day <laughs> when we get to sixty five, seven. Everything, the memories, you won't have them anymore. They will I disappear. Love Delaney, man, that's what you need. You're like, oh, fuck it, I'll make more memories. I'll I gotta keep this bank. I lose them all the time. You know, what I'm saying somebody be like, you remember me? <laughs> oh man, I don't remember you. We went. Di- yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't remember. But, you know, I'm going to give you the whoop de wop <laughs> But long as the long as the pocket's fat, I know I'll come across you again, buddy. <laughs> All right, so let's tw- twist the question. What else we got on the dock? Yeah. Good job, Mitch. What was a good twist question? I think I was saving that. I've been... I've been saving that one for a minute just because, like, I, it was a time where, like, it's our last podcast of talking because next week's going to be the best of. So it's kind of like we could just remember everything this year. Yeah, and awesome. good good point, too. Good reminder. That was uh, a good yeah, one. Next week is a best of, so all the best moments from the year. The boys will obviously be off spending Christmas with the fam, friends, whatever everybody wants to do. Uh, so, yeah, this will be our kind of our, yeah, our last episode of the year. Big 2024 coming. Yeah, yeah like, I know he wanted to be. I can't wait for tomorrow. We got our uh, our gift exchange, our white elephant. Yeah. Yeah, get on that now. 23K, we might have to lift that and lift your price. <laughs> It's a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So tune into that next week. But also shout out to everybody who's been listening all year long. It's been a uh, it's been a hell of a year, boys. It's been a record year. Big ones coming next year. I know we're working on a lot of different stuff. We did uh this past year, you kind of like look back on it, all the shit that we did, like with the tour. We did like two episodes a week, like in the spring for a little bit of time. You look at slips and picks, the gambling show that Delaney's co-hosted on, our NFL gambling show, our college gambling show, Bet the Bus. 
busting with the boys in the year, booking guests, trying to lean into kind of like the NFL nature of busting with Taylor and myself versus doing all the lifestyle interviews and podcasts, which we will we will get back to doing in the off season. Um, but we've been playing with a lot of different stuff because obviously it's been Taylor and I's first year kind of out of it together, uh, out of the NFL. So we've been trying to pour in and feel like, you know, figure out what are, where our lanes are, like doing the pro football football show with Big Cat, being on the yak each week, like doing surviving. Like we've been trying to do a lot of different stuff to kind of figure out our footing next year. Like bus our bus scenes is kind of going through some transition right now. So people who follow our vlogs, like on our YouTube channel, we have uh, Under the Hood, which is like our behind the scenes of everywhere we kind of travel, the fun stuff we get to do. And then we have bus scenes, which is kind of the elements around the office. JP's kind of taken that and ran with it and threw in some new wrinkles. When does the next bus scenes come out? Uh, yeah, end of the month, so next week. Got you. So we're, we're definitely workshopping. and We've been workshopping and doing a lot of different things this year, but we are going to kind of dial in the quality of everything we want to do going into the next year because, trust me, we know we've been in front of everybody's fucking face is 24 seven with a lot of different things, but it's, it's been kind of like a, an organized chaos, I guess you could say, but shout out to everybody that's been listening all year. It's, it, it definitely means the world. Uh, I guess we can go in to start talking about our Christmas stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Get into the season. Oh, would you do shittiest moment already? Well, shittiest moment. I think we should keep, we should kick oh, off. Uh, shittiest moment. Of, yes. Okay. Yeah. Dude wipes. <laughs> Here we go. Dude wipes. Still using toilet paper. Stop being an idiot, boys. Drop the TP and pick up the dude wipes. The, the wet, extra large, flushable wipes that clears instead of smears. Wiping wet just cleans better than wiping dry. Get confidently clean with dude wipes that gets all the crap toilet paper leaves behind. You can pick up dude wipes on Amazon or Walmart and Target nationwide. Um, shittiest moment. Let's, let's go shittiest Christmas. Ooh. Shittiest Christmas. Do you have a shittiest Christmas story? I can, I, I, if you guys don't have one yet, I can kick one off. Go ahead. I guess technically I have two, but one, I found that maybe I've even told it before on here, but when I was probably like, ah, maybe like nine years old, eight or nine, so like peak Christmas, you get to open the one present Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. and our uncle, shout out Uncle Bob, he would always give us like a video game or like he would always give us the cool gift that we would all open. And my brothers... My grandma lived with us at the time, and she was like 85, very religious woman. And my brothers are like, Jay, you have to open Mimi's present. Like, it is the best present you could get, you could ask for on Christmas Eve. I have two older brothers. So I'm like, I, I, I'm going to go with, the, with Mimi's present. And I'm like super hyped. They just opened two video games, like the new whatevers. I open up Mimi's present, and it's this baby Jesus, like tiny, just sort of like, Baby Jesus, you'd put in a manger. Yeah, the figurine. <laughs> and I just start to wag my eyes, start to welp. I'm like, thanks, baby. <laughs> I'm like, just holding my tears in. My parents are pissed at my brothers. And they're like, Jay, you, you can open another one. It's okay. But I just remember being so sad, like holding this tiny baby Jesus figurine. Like, I would have been like, <laughs> I, you know, your grandma's right there. You have to hold it together. Oh, you got to yeah, yeah, You got to act like you like it. Uh, right. I'm opening a new like one when everybody baby, go like... to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bro, there is, like, if there's a couple. So one year, it was my senior year of high school, too. I got my MIP, my minor in possession, on Christmas Eve. Oh. <sighs> Basically, like, on the 23rd that night, was sitting in the tank, like sitting in the jail cell in Christmas Eve morning and had to call somebody like a buddy of mine to get out and come pick me up because I didn't want to call my parents. And, uh, you know, slept at my buddy's house that night and he's like, hey, like, I'm taking you, I got to take you back home. Like, you got to tell your parents. Like, I can't keep this from your parents. I have to tell them. So either you can do it or I'll do it. Like, I picked you up. I got you at my house. You can sleep here. That's fine. But now you need to go, you know, face the music. Yeah. I walked in, told my parents, Walked in, I was like, "You have a fun night." I was like, "Not really." You could say that. She was like, "Would you get arrested or something?" And I said, "Well, funny enough, I did." <laughs> and she kind of stopped doing the dish and turned around. She's like, "Are you being serious?" And I was like, "Yeah, I just I got an MIP," and she like kind of put the stuff down, and she's like, "You go tell your dad. Like, there's no saving you now." Yeah. And I was like, "Can you come with me?" <laughs> I'm 18, 17, 18 years old. Can you come with me? Like, no, there's no, 
No. Yeah. You got to go tell your dad. So I went in and told my dad. I start crying like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Telling my dad because I didn't want to have to, you know, get a, have to face a shot at the title. Like, he's pissed like, because I have offers from colleges yeah. like he's like you're about to throw all this away because of an mip doing this hanging around the wrong fucking people like giving me a stern talking to um and so we're a family like growing up catholic you go to midnight mass every year so we're in midnight mass and it is the most awkward christmas of my life because i had been in a jail yeah. cell the night before and everyone so that's probably talking. the shittiest yeah yeah everybody was talking and and logan and i <laughs> logan and i saw them that night like in midnight mass and unfortunately Called a case of the giggles, thinking of like they're seeing me, like you know, I'm standing there with the parents and everything oh, yeah, else. They laugh. And you're kind of laughing about the night before type of thing, like why didn't you run with us, yada yada. I'm thinking like I stayed back, hoping that that would be like the honorable thing to do, and they let us go. And uh, but so I'm catching the giggles in the pew at midnight mass, and fortunately I was able to kind of hide it. But my old man, like he looked over at me, and oh, I was like, seriously. oh my god. <laughs> but seriously. you know when you got the you got the giggles that like you can't you can't stop you, just you can do. And, oh shit! <laughs> but that was a shitty. That was the shittiest Christmas. But to JP's point, like there's like that realization of knowing that you can't keep up with all your friends. Like, you make all your Christmas lists that you want to give to your parents. Like I want this from you know from all the clothes spots. Hollister back then, right? Hollister, some Abercrombie, and you're like you're wanting all the best shit to wear. You know, yeah. to impress the women. Mm -hmm. And when you get like Aeropostale and just the the bullshit. JC Pennies. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck, man. Like, they're about to ride my ass when I wear this shit to the to the Christmas tournament. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that realization of like, damn, you can't like get all the gifts that all your boys are coming up. I got this, I got that, I got this new system. And you're just like, man, fuck you. Yeah, I'll get it somewhere. True. I'll get it one day. Just laughing now. <laughs> 100K. What uh D, what's your I don't know if I have a I don't think I've have a Shitty Christmas mo mo moment. Our our Christmases are usually really calm and collective family stuff. But I do have a shitty moment when my mom first brought me a car. It was an 86 Honda Accord stick. Okay. And I remember she like, just brought you this car. It was my birthday. I, I forget what year it was. I think I was 16 maybe. And uh, she was like, go put some gas in it. I'm like, God, you know, I, I could drive a stick because I've been practicing driving cars and I I can not I'm not the best at driving sticks so I go to the gas station I crash it right I crash into the gas station boom scratch it up bro like damn you just hit the I jumped out like damn you hit the gas like the gas I hit the, I hit pump? the, the pump I hit the metal thing I got too close boom and hit it scraped the whole car up on the side I'm like damn you're so, flying in there <laughs> yeah because it was a stick so I, you know I told my I could drive a stick I'm not that good but I could drive a stick Came out out of first, it like bumped into first and boom, boom, hit the thing. I'm like, damn. So me and bro jump out, like, damn, bro, you just, I'm like, I'm scared. I'm, I'm like, we're going to tell somebody hit us. We went in the gas station and somebody scraped us. And when we came out, they took off. They're like, all right, okay, we're going to do that. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we get there. I'm like, I come in, I'm damn near into, mom, somebody hit the car. She like, shut up. Where? <laughs> you didn't get it. I said, when we went in the store, we came out, they were already going. Look, they scraped up the car. She looking, she like, why that look like metal? I like eh, it look like metal. No, nah, it was a car. It was a great car. Great car hit that shit. Two weeks later, bro, like get mad at me. Mom, lady, lady, he crashed the car. Lady crashed the car to the gas station. I'm like, ha! Ah. Uh, she takes the car. I oh, so he ended up telling on you when y'all were. Yeah, he when... got mad at me. He got mad at me when he told her I knew he was gonna go drop the dime. I just didn't know when. It took him two weeks, bro. When he dropped the dime, like, man, you remember he said someone hit him. He ran into the gas pump. <laughs> I'm like, damn, <laughs> car go. That's the game. Yeah, that's, that's game my shit is moment, man. Mom scared me. Like, I was, I'm still scared of my mom, to be honest. She crazy. Anybody else got a shitty moment? If we want to jump off the uh, tear talk. I, I got one. It's not like really like a shitty moment. It's more I got body bagged by my whole family last Christmas. Last, this, pa last? This, this past year. So my brother just set it up. He lives in Hawaii. He's only here like usually one week of the year. I wanted to get him like a good gift. So I spent some time thinking and I found this like old boom box that you could put like tape decks in it. And it also was like a Bluetooth speaker. So like, I'm like, this would be good. You could like hang out on the beach with it, all this waterproof. Right, it's a perfect gift. 
Um, so I spent like a good amount of change on this. And then I give it to him and I'm like, yeah, like it's not a big deal. Like I don't really care like what he gets me. But on the inside, I'm like, but he better get me something like, you know, something nice. So he comes down, like, right as I give him the gift, I see him run upstairs, like, in the middle of us opening gifts. I'm like, what is he doing? He comes back down. He's got, like, a circle wrapped up. I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, maybe this is, like, a cool little gift. I open it. He had taken a game ball that I got in T-ball when I was, like, six and signed his name on it and gave it to me. <laughs> I open it, and the whole family goes nuts. <laughs> Everyone's laughing, and I'm sitting there like, are you for real? And literally everyone, like for 10 minutes, no one can stop laughing. And I'm sitting there like the class, like not in the class clown, I am the dunce of the corner. And it was the funniest thing ever. But for like 10 minutes, I couldn't get outside of my head to appreciate the joke. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. I'm like, I just made a lot of money and good like time beacon out a gift for you. And no one could care about his gift. Everyone's like, that is the funniest thing ever. And I've got a video of it, and I'll I'll post it or whatever when this comes out. <laughs> but, like, to this day, everyone's like, dude, you got to stop spending money on gifts. Like, think of something funny like he did. And so this year, I'm going to try and – I don't even know if he's coming home or not, but I'm going to try and, and replicate something of, of that level. But, yeah, man, just, like, spend quality time and money only to just get absolutely posted yeah. by my brother. That's I'll just amazing. give him Sam from Hawaii, man. I was here. <laughs> Got you what you really wanted. <laughs> Dude, I have one other one. It's quick. My birthday is also on Christmas, so Christmas oh, is like Oh, damn, that's double. dope. Yeah, when you're young, it's dope. Yeah, yeah. So I'm super excited. We had spaghetti the night before, and I don't ever really get sick, and I got really sick Christmas Eve night to where, like, I'm laying in my bed, and I run to the bathroom, and right as I'm getting to the bathroom, I just projectile onto the floor, and I'm still running. Then I slip, land in my throw up. <laughs> I just puked out. So I'm, like, covered in red. Oh. I'm, like, puking on the toilet. You know, then you hit the classic, the door frame with the small silhouette of mom. <laughs> I'm just like dripping and throw up. But the whole Christmas morning is just horrible because oh, I'm, like, smell sick. too. Yeah, you like, smell like up. my brothers are oh, hype yeah, opening their presents. The worst. The worst. I didn't eat spaghetti for so long. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to eat it after that. Yeah. I've been yeah. on Christmas too, and it blows. Worst. It was like when you're like six, when you're like, it is the biggest day of the year, and you're literally biggest. quarantined in a room with the flu, and they're like slipping gifts like in one yeah. by one. And they're like, hope you enjoy it. You're like, man, <laughs> fuck this. You're just dude, walking out to the tree on Christmas morning is like game day, dude. Oh, yeah. Love it. Best time of the year there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tear Talk. Do we have an ad for Tear Talk? Jack? Uh, we do not. No. All right, Tear Talk. Let's do, uh, let's Tear Talk Christmas movies. Mm. We'll go Christmas movies. We might have uh, Max and CMC zooming in. I was going to say no, but it also could be fun with the, with the Pro Bowl game. Oh, see, they need a black guy to zoom in though, just to give some parody, just to show some parody. Delaney zooms in. <laughs> hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> All right, let's take a few minutes. Tear talk. All right, tear talk. Christmas movies. <clears throat> I'll start it off. Yeah, go ahead. My man, I just thought of another one. Honorable mention. I got to give a shout out. Honorable mention to uh, Christmas Story. Oh yeah, yeah. That, I was yeah. Something I like that, that runs every, every year, year on Christmas, all day long, twenty four seven. Yep. That you got to give. You got to pay homage to Christmas Story because that do. was the one I grew up on. That was yep. the one you watch. That's the one I have as background noise, no matter what. Every year on Christmas. Mm -hmm. My tier three is going to be the holiday. Ooh. A little love, a little love story, a little love movie. Gets me in a good vibe. It's a great movie. The wife and I watch every year. Um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy the holiday. My tier two. Four Christmases. I, you know, there's an element of, do you want to, you know, there's so many good Christmas movies and it's hard to, you know, you got Elf in there, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. More, yeah, all of the other ones out there. <laughs> but Four Christmases to me is something I will always watch when it's on TV. Love Vince Vaughn. Love the whole dynamic with the the 
them being named after the cities they were conceived in. I think, uh, who is it, John, Fa John, John uh, Favreau? Favreau? John Favreau being in it. Like, Four Christmases is all time to me. My favorite Christmas movie, Tier 1, has to be what? He did an honorable, honorable mention. Honorable mention. Tier Christmas three. Story, Tier 3 is Holiday. Tier 2 is Four Christmases. My Tier 1, my number one, is... Uh, Jim Carrey's The Grinch. Mm, that to me is, is truly all time. It's that's one you have to watch every year. That is an all time performance. I mean, that's up there with yeah. like The Dark Knight. That's yeah. up there with Heath Ledger as Joker. Yeah. Jim Carrey as The Grinch is maybe back. one of the greatest acting performances of all time. He coming back as The Grinch. What? Yeah. They, they came out. Jim, uh, Jim Carrey going to do another Grinch. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, he crushes it, man. He like, did. that is. That's, That's my tier one. That's the best. He he is the Grinch. Yes. He yeah. crushes it, man. Uh, my honorable. You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> my honorable. Yeah, one word. You got to give one word for that, for my tier talk. Oh. That judges it. Um. <laughs> festival. <laughs> festival? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got G. Jolly. <laughs> Christmas. Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> Beautiful. Mary. All right. <laughs> Glad we did that one. <laughs> Delaney. Delaney, what's your tear talk? Well, my honorable uh, honorable mention is Charlie Brown Christmas story. Mm. Cause that's a that's just like the Christmas story. Right. It goes right. down in history, but as the cartoon version. Yeah. And then my tier three. It's going to be Gremlins. Pull that one out. Gremlins grew up with that. One of the best, one of the best horror Christmas movies to start off with 19, especially because it was 1986. I want to say that came out or 1984, whichever we hear, but one of the top. My tier two is going to be Bad Santa. Oh, damn. That's a good one. <laughs> Love that movie. I just, Everything about that movie just tells me I fucking loves Christmas. You know what I mean? It's just like he's a shitty Santa drunk. Stealing stuff. Billy Bob Gordon. Yeah. yeah. Got a little little person in there stealing. <laughs> that, t that tells Delaney this is. That's Christmas. Is the season. That's yeah, Christmas. We Christmas. literally stealing from people on Christmas. We go out, we rake prices up, we buy all these gifts, and then right after the gifts get brought, the prices go down. Well, I think it's the other way. Prices go down, right? Oh, they do it the way I'm talking about. Then after Christmas, all the prices go down. You like, damn. Well, I just didn't wait till after Christmas. All right, but enough yeah, with that. No, no, you, yeah. It's my tier one. Tier one. Yeah, hurry up, man. Friday after next. Die hard, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Die hard. Oh, one person. <laughs> what? Die hard? Yeah, I feel yeah. like Die Hard's always. I in got there. a bad. <laughs> Admission here, I've never seen Die Hard. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disqualification. Yeah. Oh, my God. You'd be a John McClane super fan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's on me. Maybe to I, I got to watch that. I got to watch it. You got to watch it. I hate it. to admit that. You need to watch that, like, tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll love it. I promise you. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's when Bruce Willis was the man. Like... The Unstoppable. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? He had all the bad wives. He was sleeping with <laughs> every actress out there. He was on top. He was on top. He was definitely on top. Because <laughs> he was with Demi Moore, right? Demi. No. My word is interesting. It's, okay, I'll take that. Different. yippee Kaye, motherfucker. <laughs> all hyphenated. <laughs> Movie night. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. I like scary Christmases. Yeah, yeah. But you love Spooktober. Like you I love, love Spooktober. Yeah, I love all the gory shit. Like I even watch scary movies, Christmas scary movies, like plain and simple. So my girl be like, Why I'm like, it's a Christmas movie. They're just <laughs> killing people. <laughs> yeah. You you know know Christmas, that? bloody Christmas. Gun. Yeah, bloody Christmas. Yeah. I had so I had all the scare horror, but I'm like, I don't think they've seen a few of these movies. So let me go with a few that people may have seen. Uh, 
Violent yeah. Night. Yeah, Violent Vi- Night. Yeah, Violent Night. Night. I do want to check that out. Yeah. That yeah. one's fun. Yeah. Yo, you know what you need to do, Delaney? You need to lead the charge for, like, the scary movies during the month of December. Like, Spooktober, like, carried into... Well, no, because y'all like to go real jolly, because Taylor is, like... Yeah, but you can Christmas, be... Christmas, like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but you can, you can be the other way. You can be the opposite. Be, okay. gr- yeah, yeah. You know, be a, vo- be a uh, mouthpiece al- for the fan base who loves the scary shit. It's almost like the movie The the Boy Named Christmas, or what, Chris... The Boy Named Chris or something like that, Christopher. It's a movie called The Boy Named Christopher or, something, or Christmas. You know what I'm talking about? A boy called Christmas. A boy called yeah. Christmas. So like, I guess he Christmas, and then the brother is like the, the other person, like the evil Christmas. Yeah, I can I can do the evil one. What uh, what's your guys's top movies? I'll throw them out there. Rattle them off. I'll hit one. I'm glad you did four Christmases because it makes my list easy. So I'm gonna leave it off. But I just want to acknowledge that that's an incredible Christmas movie. But my official honorable mention is Jingle All the Way, mm-hmm. which is a banger. Yes. Um, yeah, and low key shout out to Sinbad. He's an awesome character in that. <laughs> um, my number three is going to be Elf. I feel like you can't leave Ooh. off Elf. And no one said it yet. I know, I know it's that. like. It Almost is it's, too it's, obvious yeah. where you want to use something else, but yeah, Elf is phenomenal. That's really peak Christmas to me. Uh, number two, uh, Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. Uh, Love that. Great yeah, that was a great one. trilogy. Yeah, yeah anything Tim so Allen fun. did fucking kills it. Yeah, yeah. That that to me, we like my family. We always watch that on Christmas Eve. So when that's on, it's like I feel like in the most holiday spirit. Uh, and then number one, another Tim Allen banger. Christmas with the Cranks. Ooh. That one really is just fun. You got the whole dynamic of like abandoning Christmas and then you just fully embrace it at the yeah, end. Yeah. And my favorite Christmas song ever is in that movie. So um yeah, that's that's me. Solid. Like that. that was yeah. solid. Yeah. I like the Santa, Yeah, I like the Santa Claus one so mm. much. I Santa Claus is just Tim Allen to me is so awesome. I just love Tim Allen. So and when you're young, you kind of think like, I wonder if that's a is that real? Yeah, that, that's, that's yeah, is that a real Calvin thing? SC. Yeah. There's always like when movies are kind of real in your eyes, like, eh, I wonder, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got Neil, the fucking his like wife's like new dude who's just yeah. geeks me out with the sweaters and shit. Hey, what was the movie last year that came out on Netflix with Will Ferrell? Uh Spirit. yeah. Spirit. Oh, Spirit that's yeah. actually a solid flick. I haven't seen that yet. I think so, I yeah. It. Anything. Like it's a bright. solid, like, Christmas movie for, you know, how they kind of car wash some of these Netflix movies. Well, Will Ferrell, was though, good. was just fucking hilarious. God, yeah. Damn. Yeah. He's so funny, man. What do you got, G? One word? Yeah. Tim. <laughs> Santa. Wholesome. Mm. 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 Who's going next? Tear Talk, Christmas movies. I can go. My, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Just Friends with mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. One good. of my favorite little rom-coms. It is a good one. Very quotable movie. Uh, tier three, I'm going to go Polar Express. Whoa, I saw that one too. I was looking at down I like love that. The Polar Express. Tier two, Jim Carrey's Grinch. Yes. And tier one, I tweeted about it this weekend, but the OG Rudolph, when it's like the... The racist version. Nation. Yeah, the racist Yukon version. Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> no, what did he say? He said the racist version. No, just, they treat Rudolph so wrong in Crazy. that version. That's what I said. It's the racist version. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that shit is so funny. <laughs> Dude, but yeah, Yukon Cornelius, one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Great name. Wait, that's the snowman, right? Not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, on Polar Express, you talking about? No, nah, Rudolph. Oh, Rudolph. Oh. Nostalgia. Yeah. Um, that OG Rudolph one's like, it's like the first movie you probably watch. If it's not a Christmas yeah. story, it's Rudolph. God damn it, Mitch. Cheerful. Uh, classics. Yeah. OGs. Legend. Legend. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm fighting a war on Twitter right now. <laughs> oh, God. I can go next. Uh, my honorable mention is going to go to Fred Claus. 
I was Ooh. on this weekend and I watched it. And it's just such a funny one. Like the cast is really good. Ludacris just being in there as the DJ. Dude, it's, <laughs> yeah. One that I kind of forgot about. So I'm going to throw it in there for the honorable mention. Tier three, four Christmases, another Vince Vaughn movie. Yeah. Classic. You can watch that one any time of the year. It's yeah, funny. He's funny. As well. uh, tier two, Office Christmas Party. Oh, so funny. God, it's a classic. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just so funny. And then tier one has got to be OG Jim Carrey Grinch. Yeah. Like, I, I, that movie, like you said, well, the performance is just like unbelievable. And all the one liners, like, it is, it's a perfect performance. So it really is. And now that we get older and watch it back, you're just thinking, like, yo, this motherfucker nailed it. It's still yeah. watchable. You, oh, it, yeah. it still looked like it was made today if yeah. you was to watch it right now. It's so good. But yeah. Good, very good, very good. Great. Epic. Vin Smith. Does that play? Yeah, of course. Whoville. And that's all, folks. <laughs> you heard what I gave you? <laughs> Whoville. <laughs> Did you go, Mitch? No. All right. I guess I won't go. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right. My, uh, he... He sparked one for me, so my honorable mention was go to Office Christmas Party. My tier three will go to The Night Before with Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yeah. and Anthony Mackie. I think, I think that's a good one. And then my tier two is The Elf, and my tier one is The Polar Express. And my favorite scene is that, in that movie is The Caribou. The Caribou. And they're just pulling on his, on his yeah. beard. Like, I think that is. What was your tier three? The Night Before. Night. Gotcha. Four. That is my, yeah. I'm surprised no one did Tim Burton the night before Christmas. Or what it was, the, what was the cartoon. You know, like, you know, you know, you know one yeah. that did not get mentioned that truly is God tier. Or not, you not I don't know if you can say that. I don't know if you guys have watched it. A wonderful life. Yeah, God tier. Oh, yeah, that's God tier. I feel like with that, if that wasn't mentioned, there's always some stands that are like, that's ridiculous. You guys didn't put in a wonderful life. I love that, but I'm more of like I like the like. Wait, hang on I like, now, I like funny. Yeah. Like yeah, just funny Christmas like movies. Selfish, fun Christmas, but but a wonderful life is I think that's an real, incredible movie. The really fact that you can movie. still watch it now and it's black and white, like. Yeah, I mean, them are them are the, yeah. the stables. Them are yeah. stable movies. Probably some color version. Did, anybody, would you, did you have a Christmas story on it? On yours, honorable mention. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah Christmas story honorable mention. But yeah, what, the fact that Wonderful Life didn't get any. Kind of love that is yeah. that that's a really good Christmas movie. Very, but they don't even have that in the top twenty though. If you look at top twenty Christmas movies right now, that's probably written by somebody out. who might not just have it in there. I mean, it's they had in, a lot of black list. and white movies in there. They just didn't have that one. That one, I think that one's so <laughs> phenomenal. Anybody got big Christmas plans? Whoa. You're hosting Man. this year, G? Let's Your go, King. House? Yeah, I'm hosting at my house. <laughs> I don't know how I got roped into that. <laughs> nice. Damn. So, my yeah, all my siblings, their kids, it's going to be a full house. Which sucks, too, because you don't get to, like, slip away. You know, you, you don't get walk. to dip out. Yeah. You know, the walk is just the back porch, but... Yeah. It'll be fun. But I am kind of like, holy shit, what have I done? Yeah. Are you hosting? No, no, no. We're going to a, a family's house yeah, in Atlanta. Oh, no, you're going to Atlanta? Going to Atlanta. You going back home, Mitch? JP? Going back home. And then back on, come back 26, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, because we got what, slips and picks on the 27th? Yeah, yeah. I'll be back the 26th. So, yeah, I come back the 26th. I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah Steven texted me and told me the 27th. Well, boys, everybody watching, have a hell of a Christmas. Happy holidays from the boys to you. Thank you for consuming this, our content. Best of next week. What is that? That's on the 26th? Best of on the 26th next week. The boys will be out of the office. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry New Christmas, Year. everyone. See you next year. Subscribe. Comment. <laughs>